American Conference, the Oakland Raiders and San Diego Chargers. Two teams who battled to a virtual tie in the AFC West, 11 and 5. They each beat each other on their home field, and the Chargers are introduced now. San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium, named after the recently deceased sports writer who brought Major League Sports to this city. 52,000 partisan fans decorated in their blue and gold. And an intense rivalry. 43rd time these two teams have met, and yet they have never played each other in a championship game. Pride and poise of Oakland against Charger Power. Will it be San Diego or Oakland that goes to New Orleans? NBC Sports presents the best of the National Football League, the American Football Conference Championship game. Today, from San Diego Stadium, it's the Oakland Raiders and the San Diego Chargers. This championship game is brought to you by Plymouth, who invites you to drive the front-wheel drive Plymouth Reliant K, the American way to beat the pump. By Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. By Ryder Truck Rental, the best truck money can rent. And by Allstate Insurance Companies. You're in good hands with Allstate. I'm Dick Enberg, and welcome to the third meeting between these two teams. Oakland and San Diego battled in a big offensive shows during the regular season. The loser in both those games scored 24 points. We expect much the same today. We'll be talking more about the offense with former quarterbacks Len Dawson and John Brody later. But when you get to championship play, usually the emphasis is on defense, and the teams that win play great defensive ball. We have our expert, too, Merlin Olson. You played on that side of the line of scrimmage. How about these two clubs on defense? Well, Dick, no question that the Oakland Raiders are are here because of the great play on defense, especially the second half of the year. Their big concern in this game, coping with a complicated San Diego offense and Dan Fouts. They have to make him uncomfortable, put the pressure on him in that pocket if they're going to be successful today. Well, they got a couple of men with H's on their back, Hayes and Hendricks, that'll make him uncomfortable for San Diego to stop Oakland. What do you see defensively there? You've got to treat Oakland a little bit differently. They have a fine running game, better balance offensively. I think shut them off on the running game and not allow Plunkett to have that extra time that he needs for the deep pass patterns which he favors. So that's a look at the defense for the offense. Let's go to two men with 36 years combined of pro football experience. Len Dawson and John Brody. Thank you, Dick. Lenny, Merlin thinks the defense wins championships. How do you react to I, that? You don't. You know that I do not believe that. I guess with the exception of Oakland, but you know what I know, that offenses get you in there. The rule changes have had an effect, and I think that San Diego today is going to try to get Oakland in defensive situations that they do not enjoy. Man-to-man -man coverage with great receivers in uncomfortable positions. It will be tough for Dan Fouts because Oakland knows the intention of him, and so as we go along throughout the day, we'll be able to keep you up with whether he's successful for whether he isn't. You know, on the other side, Jim Plunkett has had a fantastic year. He is 11 and 2 in the games that he has started. I think this afternoon he's going to have exercise patience because for Oakland, they take the ball away more than anybody in the NFL. For San Diego, they give it away more than anybody else. That's a story from the field. Now back up to Dick. Thank you, gentlemen. And now we prepare for the coin toss. You know, often Merlin Olson in times like this. As a defensive player, didn't you uh, hope that you were on the field first where you might force that turnover? I had a feeling today that Philadelphia enjoyed being on defense initially against Dallas. Dick, I think you'd like to put your strength on the field first. I think a team like Oakland wants their defense up. A team like San Diego would like to have their offense up. Cal Lepore is the referee, and now the toss of the coin. And the tail is pale. Visiting teams, Oakland will make the call. In the air. What do you call? Heads. Calls heads. It is heads. Oakland wins the toss. I'd like to receive. Would you say the goal? Turn around, please. Oakland.
wins a toss. Lex receive. That's it. Good luck, man. Have a good one. Alapor and his crew, Art Demis, Leo Miles, Bill Reynolds, Pat Knight, Grover Clemmer, Dick Dalek, Red Cashin, Al Jury. An honor for these gentlemen to be working the American Conference Championship game. Tom Flores, 43 years of age, University of Pacific graduate. He's been a Raider most of his football life. Don Coriel. He was in the playoffs with the St. Louis Cardinals three times, lost first-round games. Lost last year with San Diego in the first round, but here he is playing on his home field for the championship today. Rolf Panerska, much publicized athlete, lucky to be in those football cleats today after a near-fatal battle with a intestinal disease last year and he'll kick it off to the black and silver of Oakland Dick in a game like this emotion pumping both sides of the line of scrimmage you'd like to get in and get your feet wet a little bit I don't think we're going to see either team explode I think they're going to be a little tight right here at the beginning of the game they need to get a hit or two to kind of settle down Arthur Whittington, number 22, and Keith Moody, number 26, will return for Oakland. You'll see Benerska as he kicks the ball head immediately to the sidelines to protect himself against the surgery that followed that intestinal disease. Ready to go, and they're on their feet in San Diego. Keith Moody, the ex-Buffalo Bill at the 9. And he's down at the 29-yard line. Hal Stringer, number 45, and Hank Bauer, 37, with a tackle. The offense for the Oakland Raiders, led by 16, Jim Plunkett. You'll see those in the white configuration are pro bowlers. Kenny King is a first-year Raider, goes to that pro bowl. Mark Van Egan, the reliable fullback. Cliff Branch represents the speed. Bob Chandler, the finesse, and Raymond Chester. Oh, what big catches in the win against Cleveland last week. Art Shell on the way to the Pro Bowl with Gene Upshaw, Dave Galdi, Mickey Marvin, and Henry Lawrence. Van Egan. For four yards, Leroy Jones made the tackle. Defensively for the San Diego Chargers, a front four that has enjoyed uh, considerable superlatives written about them this year. Leroy Jones and then the other three all going to the Pro Bowl. Big Louie Kelcher, Gary Big Hands Johnson, the speed Fred Dean, linebackers Preston Horn and Lowe. Some doubt about their talent in covering the pass. Buchanan and Williams at the corners. Glenn Edwards and Mike Fuller at safety. Second and six. Kenny King. Ray Preston after a short game. And Louis Kelcher. And they love Louis. Big Louis Kelcher, number 74. He's the policeman. Watch his reaction now. They're trying to pin him away from that draw play. Just spins back inside. That's good recognition and excellent reaction to the to the play to the draw they're trying to open it up give, give the quarterback a little more room with that play deck and now Plunkett faces a possible pass situation at the 35 incomplete complete to Raymond Chester he could go all the way 30 20 Chester has a touchdown Chester still can't believe it. Ball glanced off the hand of the intended receiver right into his hands. And he waltzes at 65 yards. Some people say that this is a team that's destined to go to the Super Bowl. Looking at that play off the hands of Kenny King, right into the hands of Raymond Chester, and no one believed it. It caught the entire San Diego defense, of course, drifting with the anticipation that King would catch the ball. So when Chester meat hooked it down, he had clear sailing the opposite way before the defense could retract. Chris 
far out of Chandler's hold for the extra point. It's good. Sometimes you're good, and sometimes you're good and lucky. And the Raiders, in a matter of a minute and a half, have seven points on a deflection. From my football experience, I know that very often, when you get a big play like this, right off the bat, and you tend to relax a little bit, sometimes it can do almost as much damage to a team as it does good. It puts them on the scoreboard. It gives them the seven points. But you'd hope that it hasn't deflated all of that emotion that Oakland brought into this game. So the Oakland Raiders on a deflection from King to Casper, a play that would not have been legal a couple of years ago, but of course that rule been changed, have the early 7-0 lead, and now it's Barr to kick it off to San Diego. Deep for the Chargers, Hank Bauer, number 37, and Ron Smith, 84. Took a minute and 35 seconds and three plays for Oakland to get on the board. Older brother of Pittsburgh's Matt Barr. Hank Bauer at the nine. And he is smothered short of the 20-yard line. Otis McKinney, number 23, the tackler. The San Diego offense, NFL record-setting offense, led by quarterback Dan Fouts, back-to-back 4,000 yards passing. Chuck Muncie from New Orleans, Mike Thomas, the ex-Redskin with him. Three Pro Bowl receivers, Joyner, Jefferson, and Winslow, all over 1,000 yards. Shields, Doug Wilkerson, Pro Bowler, Masick, White, and Dan Audick for Russ Washington, who was injured against Oakland at midseason. From the 17-yard line, out to throw, and he's going long for Smith. All the way to the 29-yard line. one-on-one, -on -one, Fouts will pick on you. You can't put that kind of speed one-on-one, -on -one, give him time to throw the football, he'll eat you alive. Trailing 7-0, first down at the 29. Muncie dropped for a loss at the 31-yard line. Let's talk about Chuck Muncie for a moment, Merlin Olsen. He has given the Raiders, or given the Chargers, a running game they did not possess last year, but he also has brought immediately some fear to that offense because he did cough it up. He fumbled often early here in San Diego. One of the reasons the Chargers led the league in giveaways was Muncie's help in that department. He fumbled it away many times, but he has not fumbled in the last two games. Has had two great games against Pittsburgh and against Houston. If he can have that kind of game today, he gives this San Diego offense a great deal more to work with. Second down and 12. Muncie. Incomplete, and it'll be third and long. The defense for the Oakland Raiders, and as Merlin told you, a vastly improved unit from midseason on. The twos, Matuzak, the speed in Kinlaw, and Dave Browning light for a defensive lineman, but very quick. Ted Hendricks has had a banner year with the rookie Matt Millen out of Penn State, Bob Nelson back from an injury, and Rod Martin. And then there is a story in itself in Lester Hayes. A great year for him. The interception leader in the NFL. Osteen, the young corner, with Owens, the former Jet, and Mike Davis, the hero last week in Cleveland at safety. Jefferson, first down at the 14. Jefferson, 17 yards and a San Diego first down. Jefferson working one-on-one -on, -one on Lester Hayes gets across inside and Burgess Owens, number 44, has to come up from that safety position to shut it off. Jefferson, 
The yardage leader in the NFL this year. First down inside the 15. A lot of time, and he throws it away. Jefferson came back to meet the ball, but at that point, Fouts had to unload. Dick, we talked about how well this Oakland team has played defensively during the second half of the year. It's absolutely amazing. They're like drawing a line in their season. The first uh, seven games of the year, they were having problems. There you see the point totals. First seven games, they gave up a lot of points. An average of 25 per game. The last nine games, 14.2. That's tremendous defense. Second and ten. Five defensive backs for the Raiders. Otis McKinney in the lineup. Winslow is split left. Jefferson and Joyner to the right. Intercepted. And you know who? All the way to the 25-yard line goes Lester Hayes. What an amazing year for the young cornerback from Texas A&M. Lester Hayes able to anticipate, able to get a great jump on that ball. The receiver had fallen down on the play and just put himself beautifully in line for that one. And look at those numbers for one year. Now five interceptions in the playoffs, 22 turnovers for Hayes alone. And the Lester Hayes story in 1980-81 continues. Dan Fouts would like to have a string on that one, be able to pull it back. One thing you have to say about Fouts, he can throw five interceptions in the game, still come back at you. You see the slip right there by Jefferson. Fouts may have indeed be trying, been trying to hang on to that football. It was not a good pass, and it was a costly mistake on the part of the San Diego offense. 7 nothing, Oakland. Three and a half minutes into the game. Van Egan, short yardage. Fred Dean got him first. Kelcher with an assist. Oakland, like San Diego, improving its running game this year. And Kenny King, of course, the answer to that improved statistic. Dick, I have to believe that Oakland will be running at the right side of San Diego's defensive line. They want to keep Big Hands Johnson and Fred Dean pinned down with the running game to limit their pass rushing capability. This is King. Preston and Willie Buchanan. Preston from Syracuse University. It'll be third and five. Chargers having a similar year stopping the run with that of last year. It's a lost statistic with all of San Diego's offensive numbers that they finished sixth in the entire NFL in total defense. Third and five. Plunkett. Incomplete to King. They ruled that Plunkett was in the grasp and in the control of the tackler. The play is dead. Back at the 20-yard line. So record a sack for San Diego. The Oakland Raiders run deep pass patterns. Plunkett needs extra time, and he is not going to get it there. The blitz is on. They trap him. He almost pulls away. And, Dick, it was really Plunkett's running ability and scrambling ability that hurt San Diego so much in that game he started up in Oakland. And he does unload a terrific pass there. It was right on the money to King. Raymond Guy, a weapon in his own right. He hits up beauty. Mike Fuller all the way back to the 21-yard line. There's also a flag now. Fuller to the 34. Let's check the penalty. It's downfield. 59-yard kick by Guy. The San Diego Yarger Chargers came after Guy. They feel that they have to try and disrupt his timing to keep him from making that kind of kicks. Let's see if it bothers him the next time he kicks. Didn't well, seem to bother him on that one. Not that time, but he's going to get an immediate chance to kick over again, I believe, because there was an ineligible man downfield on the punt. 
San Diego says, kick it over. Well, they go back to mark the ball. Let's call in Lynn Dawson and John Brody get their early reaction to the quarterback play. Gentlemen. Diego was able to do exactly what they wanted to do in the first play of the ball game, only because they were able to isolate Smith on Davis out playing the corner. If they can do that, they'll be effective. But late in the drive, they were unable to get him man to man. He threw into his own. He'd like to have had the ball back, but Jefferson fell down. You know, I'll tell you, John, Oakland is really lucky because they were going underneath. Kicking team, still fourth down. Actually, Plunkett was going for Kenny King, throwing underneath the linebackers. They got a big break there. But you can see right now, Oakland is trying to, to run with the football, try to establish that running game to take some of the pressure off of Plunkett. Thank you, Lenny Dawson. John Brody with us here in San Diego today. And, of course, will join us in the Superdome for the Super Bowl in two weeks. So San Diego expects to get better field position as Guy forced to kick again. Again, a 10-man rush. And he hits it high, and a fair catch by Fuller at the 38. Boy, that's a clutch kick by Guy under pressure, and a timeout in San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. That was a 46-yard kick, no return. Nine minutes left, first quarter. Raiders lead by seven. Kenberg with Merlin Olsen. We're happy you're with us today, and congratulations to Dick Vermeil's Philadelphia Eagles on their big win today against Dallas. They're fighting a legend when they go up against Tom Landry and the Dallas Cowboys. They did a super job of uh, taking care of the Cowboys and earning their right to go to New Orleans. That's right. And well said. Super indeed for the Eagles as they celebrate in Philadelphia here at 7-0 Oakland, and Chuck Muncie out to the 39-yard line. Nine minutes and eight seconds left in the first quarter. In case you join us late, the Raiders with a freak touchdown. A pass, short pass to Kenny King that went through King's fingertips, deflected downfield to his teammate, Raymond Chester, who rambled 65 yards for a touchdown on the third play of the game. Fouts drove the Chargers back to the Oakland 15, only to be intercepted by Lester Hayes. Winds low in motion. Charlie Joyner, first down, 48 of Oakland. Dan Fouts is a marvel at getting that ball on target, in traffic, under pressure, that ball perfectly thrown, and Joyner, of course, arriving at the precise spot that he is supposed to be in, too. Ted Hendricks, who's had a banner season, and he almost got to Fouts. He's been the pressure man. He's been the trigger man for that defense. Live action, it's Fouts scrambling, and going long for Joyner. Touchdown! Touchdown! confidence in his receivers that he even throws when there are two people standing on top of him and Charlie Joyner makes the kind of catch that John Jefferson has been famous for all year how could he have a better catch than that a bad snap but a good spot Mike Fuller saved the extra point and the game is tied Charlie Joyner ties it on this catch, fighting off two Raiders. Burgess Owen, number 44, one of the men who had picked up Joyner in the secondary. You see the pass right there, just over the outstretched fingertips of Dwayne Osteen. He looked like he had a chance at it until the very end. Merlin, it appeared that Joyner, actually with the ball out of his vision, had hit his helmet, and he felt it up there and brought it in for the score. 
because that's what all that experience is about. Well, that's why the Chargers are watching all three of their receivers go to the Pro Bowl. Winslow, Joyner, Jefferson have been making this kind of play all year long on Dan Fouts' throws. Oh, what a catch. Great camera work, gentlemen, too. Yeah, of course, these teams have migrated out of the old American Football League into the newly formed NFL. This is not unlike the start that fans cheered and really were amazed at at times, those high-scoring treats of the old AFL days. 7-7, halfway through the first quarter. Arthur Whittington. Down at the 24-yard line. Cliff Thrift, 59 with a hit. I'd like to throw a question over to Lenny and John while we got a second here. I can remember championship games in the past until the last few years starting out very slow and that building. These guys are coming out just shooting them. So we've had a 65-yard touchdown, a 48-yard touchdown. Hank Bauer in the midst of the flurry. First down, Oakland. Chandler right, branch left, tight end Chester on the right side. Going long for Branch. Incomplete at the 39-yard line. Mike Williams and Glenn Edwards on the coverage. Plunkett wanted to have Almost an instant replay of that last situation. They got the touchdown for San Diego. He's bumped as he throws that football. Puts it a little high. Branch over the top. Almost made a, a miracle catch over the top of Williams. Branch, who had seven touchdowns in the course of this year, still one of the fastest receivers in all of football. kept him there. It rained last night and until noon today, even though the field was covered, it appears there will be some slippery spots. There are a few places on the field, Dick, when they were removing the tarps, the water would collect in spots and Plunkett had the misfortune of hitting on one of those spots. This is a clay field and it is not very heavy in grass. In other words, it, that's mostly paint you see down there, that green. There are spots that are extremely slick. Plunkett got on one of those spots. Third and 10. Third and 20, rather. Rolling. And throwing long to Branch. All the way to the 37-yard line. This isn't a pea shooting contest. They're out with the big cannons early in the first quarter. I alluded to the fact that in many in many past years, contests of this kind were grind them out affairs. Both of these teams have come out throwing the big guns immediately. The ball is in the air and they're going for broke. And that's the big weapon. That's the long-range weapon, the vertical game, as Al Davis would say for Oakland. Number 21, Cliff Branch. 9-3 speed. Ran one of the fastest 40s ever, 4-3. And it's a first down at the 37 of San Diego. Two tight ends in for the Raiders. Van Egan to the 32. Fred Dean, the tackler, with fuller assisting. Well, you were wrong for one of the few times I can Boy. recall all year. You thought it'd be a more of a passive first quarter. I thought they would test each other a little bit before they opened the gates. Uh, of course, perhaps that big play, that uh, almost a freaky kind of play, but bouncing off the hands and into Chester's hands, that might have changed the philosophy early. Look at the stick him on Lester Hayes. He said he had gloves on last week. He puts that stick him on to control the ball. He said, this, my stick him froze up. I had to knock it off my gloves. <laughs> Second and six. Look at Louis Kelcher.
obviously that's not boo, but Lou that the San Diego fans are chanting. Saved a long game. It appeared Plunkett had easy first down yardage. Instead, he gained only a couple. Actually, it's a sack. Actually, he lost a little less than a yard, so that's ruled a sack. Louie must have trouble with his shoulder pads. He's come off the field, and they're pulling up his jersey. Maybe he popped a string. There's a shoestring in the front of those pads. He may have broken it. Third and six. That's Kenny King in motion. Throwing for Christensen. And a flag is down. And we'll see against whom. It could go either way. Both men were pushing. I believe it'll be offensive interference, but I'll let the official call it for us. There are two flags down. We'll get a chance to look at it before we see the signal. No, it's against San Diego. Against the defense. Let's see what happened on the play. They're, they're all over each other fighting for position, but they're going to call Ray Preston 52. Todd Christensen out of the backfield. Watch Ray Preston now. Let's see what kind of contact is made here. He's playing man-to-man. -man. There it is. It was the first push that they called him for. Actually, at the end of that play, they could have called offensive interference. Preston was not playing the ball, but the man and used his hands. You'll see he is not looking for the ball when he gives the push. First down outside the 10. Kenny King flags are down, and I believe the Raiders got off too quickly. Here to be motion Oakland. It appeared that that was a play designed to look like a pass and then to run up inside of Dean. Shell had dropped like it was a pass, and Dean was off very quickly. And it was off against San Diego, the penalty. Uh, the Raiders on back-to-back -back penalties are inside the 10. 71. Fred Dean, too quick. Well, I said he was off quickly. <laughs> he was off ahead of the football. Dean on his way to the Pro Bowl. Started the season at home. Did not want to sign and was coached into the fold at the beginning of the regular season. First and five, Kenny King. Bob Horn and Louis Kelcher with a tackle. Kenny King carried the ball only three times all last year, and there are his uh, marks for this season against San Diego. In that second game, he had the 89-yard run, the longest in the NFL this year. They're attacking the right side of San Diego's offensive line. Gary Johnson almost overrunning the play, and that's Kelcher. He has played so well against the run. 12 tackles last week in that game. Kelcher's the man who made the play from the backside. If he doesn't make it, King may have gone into the end zone. Plunkett's going to run it in. Touchdown. Now Jim Plunkett scrambles in, and that's a dimension that our two experts, Messrs. Brody and Dawson, can well appreciate. They weren't exactly known for their running down. Talked about Plunkett ability to scramble. He is not a particularly fast runner, but he's willing to run. He's averaged five, five yards a run during the season. But never had a more important run this year than that short one into the end zone. He finds the defensive lineman clogged in the center, gives a little fake, and just dives in, slides in. Chris Farr tags on the extra point. When we return, we'll get a comment from our quarterback experts. Three minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Already three touchdowns, and Oakland leads it 14-7. The key play in that scoring drive was the 49-yard pass on third and 20. Plunkett to Cliff Branch, and then the interference goal. At the six. And he gets it to the 20 yard line before Derek Ramsey can corral him. Let's go back to the touchdown by Plunkett. And following the Oakland offense, Lenny Dawson. 
Well, Dick John Birdie and I were just talking about Plunkett's ability for survival. Now, the linebackers are really flying out of there, and you're going to see an opportunity from ground level to take a look at Plunkett, and he's going to have a lot of room to get into the end zone. He's not very fast, but there's a lot of space there because the linebackers are getting such great depth. He's going to make the move right now. There isn't anybody here. He's not that swift, but by the time anybody gets near him, he's into the end zone for a touchdown. All right, Len Dawson, first down, San Diego, now trailing 14 to 7. Muncie breaks a tackle, fumbles out of bounds. It'll stay in San Diego's possession at the 20-yard line. Mike Davis, 36, and Otis McKinney, 23, around that football. One of the reasons that Muncie had fumbled so much is he tends to carry the ball in one hand. He has very large hands. He had gotten over that in the last couple of games. Watch him here. He's getting careless. That ball is loose out in his hand. And just wave goodbye to it. He's very lucky it went out of bounds. Jefferson left. Joiner right. Winslow, the tight end on the left side. Flags down as Muncie gets only a couple. Rod Martin spearheaded the defensive charge. Tom Flores, if that's a five-yarder, might decline the penalty. It is against San Diego. Veteran right guard. So it's third and eight. Winslow way out to the left with Jefferson in the slot. Joiner at the top of your screen. Hendricks right over center. Bounce through the hands of Winslow at the 40 yard line. Otis McKinney on the coverage, the fifth defensive back. Chargers will have to punt. Partridge, who averaged 39 yards a kick on the season from Utah, played for the New Orleans Saints last year. We have not seen McCrary in the game, the second tight end. As we said, that changes what Winslow's role is in the San Diego offense. That's the first chance we've had to see him, and the pass was thrown badly. Ira Matthews waiting at the Oakland 38. Matthews, who was questionable, he's had some knee problems, returns to the 50. Cliff Thrift with a tackle. We have a timeout. Three minutes and eight seconds left in the first quarter here in San Diego, where the Raiders lead by seven. Well, they're still hopping in Philadelphia, where the Eagles defeated the Dallas Cowboys 20-7 to to win the National Conference Championship. And here in San Diego, this partisan, partisan Charger crowd has watched the Oakland Raiders take the early lead, 14-7. Oakland's ball just inside the 50, San Diego territory. Play action, Plunkett. Open, Chandler. And he has a first down at the 34. Bob Chandler, the veteran required from Buffalo, his first catch today, 15 yards. Look from behind, quarterback, Plunkett. Look at the amount of time he has. Settles on a receiver. Chandler had come back from the football. Driven the defender, Mike Williams, off, and then came back to the football, a classic Oakland pattern. How many times did we see Fred Bolitnikoff down the field, back to the football? Absolutely. Chandler, with those 49 catches and 10 touchdowns, led the Raiders in both departments. Gain of almost three. Ray Buckwheat Preston made the tackle. Say it's the biggest day of sports in 1981. Super Bowl Sunday. Just two weeks away and it'll be right here on NBC. We invite you to join Sports World. One o'clock Eastern time. A look back on the fantastic 1980 NFL year. Then at two o'clock college basketball. We'll be joining our partners Packer and McGuire as Ohio State uh, meets Virginia. Actually, I'm not going to be there. How can I? I'll be in New Orleans. That'll be uh, two weeks from today. Ohio State and Virginia. Brian Gumbel will host a spectacular pregame extravaganza of all time, and then it's the winner of this game against Philadelphia. Wide open is Chester, and a first down at the 21-yard line of San Diego. Mike Williams with a tackle, a 10-yard play. 
Gene Upshaw protecting his quarterback, Jim Pluckett. And Upshaw in his 10th title game, tying the all-time record. It's very important today that we give Plunkett enough time to read his coverage and, and, and throw the ball. It's very crucial early in the game that he has the confidence that we're blocking him so that he can drop back and have confidence when he dropped back to look for more than one receiver. The guys up front have to do a, a job, a better job than we've done all year because they have an excellent defensive line that'll come at you. They come at you for 60 minutes, and we know that. How prophetic that Gene Upshaw should call it. A touchdown to Kenny King. Plunkett, given all that protection, finds his halfback King in the end zone. It's 20 to 7. Gene Upshaw, of course, crucially responsible. He's got a one-on-one -on -one assignment with Gary Big Hands Johnson. He's taking care of his part of it. Plunkett and King are taking care of theirs. Two new members, relatively new. Plunkett was with the Raiders, of course, last year, but didn't see any action. And now Barr for the extra point. Down the middle. So Jim Plunkett of the Oakland Raiders has thrown two touchdown passes and run for a third. And it's 21 to 7. Oakland. Is that a pass? Uh, Len Dawson, that you were expecting King in the end zone. Well, I'll tell you, Dick, he's working on the linebacker. Number 52 is Ray Preston. And when you have a speed like a King against a linebacker like Preston, it's a mismatch, and generally the halfback is going to come out on top. Kenny King from Oklahoma, one of the many greats for the Sooners. He's a happy personality. He says he wants to wear a peacock feather in his helmet. He has a tradition of wearing a feather in his helmet at practices. He says, you got to get me a peacock feather for the Super Bowl. Well to be decided yet. Dan Pastorini, whose broken leg allowed Plunkett to become the starting quarterback. And many feel that that was a turning point in this Raiders season. Not to take anything away from Pastorini, but how could he have done better than Plunkett? Bauer at the 11. And he has stopped at the 25-yard line. Jim Plunkett has thrown the ball six times as we watch Fouts come on. Five completions for Plunkett today. Five out of six for 160 yards and two touchdowns. That's almost a good game, and he hasn't through the first quarter yet. Fouts and the Coriel Aerial Circus now taking the field. Jefferson, top of your screen. Coriel sees Joyner, bottom of your screen, and that's Ron Smith in motion and setting left. A reverse to Smith, well read by Otis McKinney, not fooled a bit, a yard loss. On the reverse, number 84, Ron Smith, the ball carrier. Good defenses hand out the responsibility for containment. And on this particular play, Smith going outside meets the contained man who strips him to the ground. Ron Smith, a loss of one. He leaves the game, Winslow in. You got him, Grace. Muncie. Good tackle by 53, Rod Martin around the ankles of Muncie to stop him at the 27, where it will be third down and about seven. John Brody, Tom Flores off with that two touchdown uh, lead. How about the thinking of Fouts in San Diego? Well, Dick, Tom Flores knows exactly what Fouts wants to do. He wants to get him in favor of the Seven down, doesn't put him in one of those. He's trying to get any receiver he can open. Oakland has actually fooled him defensively, and as a result, one turnover and not much success. Joiner in motion. Third and call it eight. Open is Joiner. And a first down at the 46. <laughs> 20 more yards for the veteran Joiner out of Grambling. He had the touchdown earlier. That's exactly the kind of play you talked about, John. Joyner getting a matchup and breaking to the inside. 
Bouts knows how to handle that. Looked like he might have gotten a screen over there from Kellen Winslow. Almost a basketball play. A little pick. And that's the end of an exciting first quarter at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. 21-7 Raiders. The San Diego defense allowing 21 points in that first quarter. It's 21-7. The visiting Raiders over the Chargers. Dick Enberg, Merlin Olson, Len Dawson, John Brody on hand here in San Diego. First down, Chargers will open the second quarter at their 47. Mike Thomas's first carry to midfield. Solid hit from Rod Martin. How about Ted Hendricks, 83? Let's follow him. Ted Hendricks is freelancing. They've given him the freedom to come from almost anywhere on the line of scrimmage. He goes all the way across to the right side. These are plays that we gathered for you in the first quarter, show you some of the diversity, some of the different ways in which Ted Hendricks is utilizing his talent to disrupt Dan Fouts' plan, to disrupt blocking assignments. Quick reaction here. This is the play that we saw the screen on, or the little reverse on, and you see how quickly he reacted back to that play. Flags down as Fouts is going. Intercepted by McKinney at the 20. We'll see if the Raiders were offside. Someone got in in a hurry. And now, the most important man in the field is that fellow in the black cap, Cal Lepore. Is it interception or not? Yes, sir. San Diego retains possession. McKinney's interception is nullified. A tremendous play by McKinney. Kellen Winslow in motion. They put McKinney on him down the sideline. Little delay move, and then a sprint for the ball. But that's just excellent defensive play. Picked the ball out, went up at the right moment, and took it away from Kellen Winslow. Well, that is a tremendous athletic effort by McKinney from Colorado, acquired from the New York Giants for a future draft this year. Bouts gets the ball back. Second and two. Flanker screen. Oh, Winslow's going to throw the ball. Wide open is Jefferson. shot the ball hit so quickly in the hands of Jefferson it bounced up he was lucky to pull it down that's a lateral pass oh, he, he, whipped that ball. he did indeed he's a great athlete first down at the 16 of Oakland Muncie with flags down and Muncie dropped at the 12 it appeared to be movement on the right side of the San Diego line let's go back to the last plate John Jefferson said, hey, I had a touchdown, Kelly. You got to just loft it a little bit more. Show you some teeth on that one. Penalty against San Diego will be first and 15. There'll be a little play acting on this play. You saw the little delay there at the line of scrimmage and then the burst of speed into the secondary. Watch the bounce of the ball there. Just took his eyes off it momentarily but went right back to it. Great body control. Illegal formation, offense, only six men in the line of scrimmage. First. Must have seven men on the line of scrimmage. One of those interior linemen or a tight end lined up off the line of scrimmage, and it's Chuck Muncie receiving some attention on the sidelines. He's been replaced. Mike Thomas does a lone setback. Bout stumps it to Thomas. Good move. But down at the 21, Matt Millen, 55, the rookie from Penn State. One of only two rookies on this Oakland team. The other is backup quarterback Mark Wilson. They call Millen Spike. And he has put the spike in a lot of offensive plays during this season. Has been a most valuable addition. 265 pounds out there today. Playing the responsibility, the role of linebacker. But he's just an extra defensive lineman out there. 
TNT still being worked on and now we'll take a seat along the near sidelines as Fouts stares at second and 14. Jesperson coming to this side Winslow split left. Intercepted by Owens. Burgess Owens has blockers and Thomas hits him at the 27 yard line. Tough break for the Chargers and went right through someone's hands. John Brody, why don't you take this replay? Well, Dan Fouts gets the defense he's looking for. He finds a way to get Jefferson in the middle, one-on-one. -on -one. They're using five backs back there, but he still found some openings. He's made a couple crucial mistakes. They both resulted in turnovers. As a result, this baby has the problems of a possible blowout. Now there's a timeout. Twelve and a half minutes remaining in the first half. The Raiders have the lead and the ball. Here's that interception. Both interceptions deep in Oakland territory. John, should the quarterback have to take the responsibility of an interception on that one? Well, let's see. Here's John Jefferson again. I agree with John Brody. That was toss. a bad yeah. toss. Very often, though, a pass perfectly thrown bounces off the hands of the receiver and becomes an interception. And in that case, certainly the quarterback should not be responsible. But John was right. That one was high. The ex-Jet, Burgess Owens, with the interception. Plunkett has the ball at his 25. Think of the 26. Van Egan, close to the 30. And off number 30, Mark Van Egan. Mark Van Egan from Colgate. Again, the leading rusher for the Raiders this year with 838 yards. Also on the stop. The all-time Oakland record holder for a single season. And... Well over the 5,000 yard mark in his career. Second down, short seven. Kenny King. 32-yard line as Louis Kelcher, who has not only contributed defensively, but also to the local cancer society. He's raised some $75,000 in the bike program the cancer people promote here in San Diego. In fact, they had to build him a special bike. The first one he got on, he just crushed both tires. They had to build him a, an extra large one. Big Lou responding well. And pursuit is the name of the game defensively, getting as many people to the point of attack as you possibly can. Chargers have done that, but they have they have not played as well defensively in this game as they have throughout this season. Third down four. Down he goes. Big hands Johnson and Louis Kelcher making the play. Fred Dean in there again, but it was Kelcher who secured the tackle. Big Lou in there. I think quarterback just pulling this one down. Watch the move on the inside. It's a stunt between Big Hands Johnson and big number 74, Louis Kelcher. Option man, the center, Dave Dalby, picked him up, but he's back in on the action. Let's go quickly and look at that stunt again. They, the two tackles exchanging responsibility. The center becomes the option pickup man. Had to come over and get Lou so he couldn't get in on the quarterback. Guy nails a long one to Fuller. Oh, my, look at this kick. Stop at the one, 71 yards, 51 on net, and a timeout. 10 minutes, 39 seconds left in the first half in San Diego. Chargers with the ball trailing by two touchdowns. Back at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. Chargers ball at the 20 after Guy's kick trickled into the end zone. 71 yards on that punt, longest of the year for Guy. 21-7, San Diego trails. Mike Thomas breaks a tackle and gains five. John Matuzak finally made the stop. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KVBC TV3, Las Vegas.
San Diego the same. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olsen, Len Dawson, John Brody. The Philadelphia Eagles defeated the Dallas Cowboys 20-7 earlier today for the National Conference Championship. This game started in a wild and crazy manner on a deflected pass that went through King's hands to his teammates Chester. 65-yard touchdown and a fumble by Thomas and the Raiders say they have it. It's Oakland's ball and look who pounces on it, Ted Hendricks. It's been that kind of day for the Raiders thus far. They have two pass interceptions to stop San Diego drives deep in Oakland territory and they lead 21 to seven and Don Coryell's team is in trouble. Bunny Dawson made the point at the opening of the show. San Diego leads the NFL in giveaways. That's fumbles and interceptions. And the Oakland Raiders lead the NFL in takeaways. There's another one. Oakland out, endeavoring to capitalize at the San Diego 29. It looked as if Hendricks would not only strip the ball away, but recovered it. Arthur Whittington in the backfield for the first time, and he gets the call. A yard at best. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Diego Chargers and the National Football League is prohibited. Lonnie Dawson, get the side of Plunkett's head. You go for a big one here. You're going to turn over. You take the shot now. to I, think about it. I yeah. look I look for uh, Bucket to go for it on first down, Merlin, not, not second down. Not second down. Now he has to throw. Good protection. Flags are down. Bucket to the 19. That would be very close to a first down, but I believe we have a hold against the Raiders. instead of a near first down or possible first down now we'll have Plunkett at second down and 20. Have you got any good second 20 plays over there Lenny? I think <laughs> yes it's a punting situation pretty soon. <laughs> Get guy back in there. It's Holding 61 offense second down. Sorry the number is 65 65. Mickey Marvin the right guard former uh, world wrist wrestling finalist. Married one of the Raiderette cheerleaders this past year. That's King who has a touchdown pass in motion. It's like a screen. King incomplete. Mike Williams on the coverage. At King and Chester, and you see Chester was floating in behind the play. I think he was looking for another deflection. That combination worked for the first touchdown of the game. Actually, actually a misfired play. Big Wilbur Young had read the screen and got out there. Plunkett could not throw the pass on the screen. Ended up going deep or trying to go deep to Chester. But the play obviously had misfired. The timing was off. The ball thrown a little bit high there. Knocked away by Williams. King unable to reach it. Chester hoping he might bat it up for another touchdown play. Van Egan and Whittington now behind Plunkett on third and 20. Got to wonder if maybe Gary Johnson wasn't shaken up. We haven't seen much of Wilbur Young in the last half of the year, but he's in there now. Plunkett to Cliff Branch. Look at the speed. Branch has a first down at the 15 yard. was watching Branch who refused to come off the field. Branch wanted more and more and more practice. One to work on another route. And they finally had to chase him off the stadium floor. You have a great receiver with speed. You could turn a short pass into a very big play. That's Branch's individual athletic skill that gets the first down. It's about a six-yard pattern. And from there on, Branch just uses his great speed and his vision to get that first down. 23 yards on the reception. Van Egan carries to the 11 yard line. Second down and six. Branch playing in his sixth AFC championship game. He missed only in 73. And in 1974, 
He set an AFC record with nine catches, 74, a game that everyone in Pittsburgh will remember. That was the year that Oakland thought they had a win, and then the immaculate reception, Franco Harris won it for the Steelers. On second and five, Van Egan drilled after a two-yard gain. Fred Dean knifing in, along with Woodrow Lowe and Gary Johnson. Fuller was there as well, and Kelcher, too. And on the tackle, number 71, Fred Dean. And number 74, Louis Kelcher. We're at the midpoint of the second quarter here in San Diego. The Raiders in command, 21-7, and trying to add to the lead after the fumble recovery. It's third. And call it a short three. Tremendous pressure on San Diego's defense here. They look up at that scoreboard. They can't afford to give up another seven-pointer. Chandler to the right. Branch in the slot. Derek Jensen in the game with Arthur Whittington. Whittington. That'll be first and goal at the three-yard line. That's complete to number 22, Arthur Whittington. Tackled by number 42, Mike Fuller. Plunkett had his wide men clear out deep in the end zone and threw underneath to his running back. Interesting how your how your play selection often can vary according to the score on the scoreboard. When you've got a good lead, you can afford to take some chances. The safe call there, the running play. Plunkett fouls up the defense, goes to the air, gets good execution from his offensive line, has time to scan, find the open man, and then deliver the ball on target. In fact, it almost looked on that first replay as if Plunkett was looking left and throwing right. He really kept that defense honest. Timeout has been called by the Oakland Raiders. Six minutes and 28 seconds before the intermission in San Diego, the Oakland Raiders lead 21 to 7. When we have good news, we'd like to share it uh, with you. And I'd like to share some of the good fortune uh, to be following my partner, Dick Enberg. Just announced yesterday that, again, for the second year in a row, the National Association of Broadcasters, sports writers have named you Broadcaster of the Year. And congratulations to you. I don't know of anyone who deserves that honor more than you do. Hey, the only thing I do well is pick good parents and good analysts. <laughs> that's, the, that's the start. Thank you, Merlin. Be great going back to Salisbury. First and goal at the three. Mark Van Egan scores for Oakland. Untouched. And usually unemotional, Tom Flores with a smile and a gesture. Get a chance to put your helmets on at home. Here comes one right into the living room. Mark Van Egan, tremendous hole, gaping hole in that offensive line. They just ripped San Diego to shreds on that one. And Van Egan, untouched, literally, as he went into the end zone. Bars try for point is there, and the Raiders have jumped in front 28 to 7. I'd like to uh, also acknowledge the fact that it'll be special that honor of Sportscaster of the Year to share it with Al Michaels of ABC, a longtime friend and his outstanding work during the course of the year, and especially from our colleagues, our sportscasters, sports writers, it is a very special honor. Tom Flores, a rather placid man on the sideline, but he does have things churning inside of him. Well, I'm not really a demonstrative person. I, uh, I get my emotions. Uh, my insides are jumping up and down, but on the outside, I'm I appear to be calm, but most of the time I'm the thinker. I'm thinking one play ahead and what has to be done, what was done, and, and I just don't show my emotions uh, like some people jumping up and down, yelling and screaming. But there are times where you'll see me emotional. Uh, when we won in Cleveland, uh, I was uh, leaping up and down the air. They just didn't catch it on, on the camera. Well, we'll be watching it today, Thomas. 28 to 7 as Bar Line drives this one to Bauer. The 10 into that slippery spot, and Oakland has San Diego pinned deep in its own end. Good coverage by Jeff Barnes, the linebacker from California. San Diego Chargers have started their drives in bad field position throughout this day, Dick, starting on their own 17, then a good position on the 38. They did something with those early possessions. Then on the 20, the 25, the 20, and now deep in there. Flag is down, and apparently Oakland was offside on the kickoff, so San Diego will get a second chance. 
Dick, one of the things we do know about the San Diego team is that there's not a there is not a team in football with more offensive explosiveness than the San Diego Chargers quarterback Dan Fouts. They've looked at a lot of long scores during the season and have come back aggressively in the game. And I'm sure right now Fouts is saying, okay, one at a time. Let's get in there and get one right now. 28 to 7 the score. How about that, uh, Len? You're following the Chargers and Dan Fouts. Uh, I guess you really expect him to pass whether he's ahead by three touchdowns or behind by three. That's for you, John. John Brody. Well, Merlin, in my opinion, there's only one man I'd like to have when I'm down by three. He's been here before. He's come out on top a Offside, few times. 46 kicking team will kick 30. But he's got a much more difficult task right now, Merlin, because he's playing against five defensive backs. Oakland is dictating what they'd like to do. They're coming at will. And he's got to bring them back before half, get seven points on the board. He can pick up 14. 21's a long way to go. And you look at those turnovers, three of them. And three touchdowns, the difference in the game. Bauer, the 20, 30, fumbles out of bounds to San Diego. They'll retain possession at the 35-yard line as Jeff Barnes popped the ball free, but fortunately for the Chargers, it kicked out of bounds. Here's Barnes. Jeff Barnes, number 56, one of the good special teamers, fighting down the sideline, gets off the block there. Good speed, just leveled Bauer. Kicked that ball loose, but it's out of bounds. Ball's been on the ground a lot today, San Diego. 6.05 left in the half. Joiner left, Jefferson right, Winslow in motion. Well covered. And Lester Hayes had his eyes on another interception. He had blanketed Jefferson. And what a remarkable athlete to have to draw the assignment man for man against John Jefferson. I talked to Lester Hayes yesterday about how he was going to play Johnson, or how he was going to play Jefferson. He said, I want to pin his left arm. I want to pin his left arm, stay right tight on him, so he can't get that left arm up to control the football. He's playing it there beautifully, although he is playing the ball in the quarterback there, not the man. Second and ten for Fouts. Jefferson, be a little short of the first down at the 45. Burgess Owens made the stop. Well, they're going to get progress closer to the 46. We may have a first down. John alluded to the problems facing Dan Fouts. One of the things that Fouts is facing is a defense that can afford to play pass only. They play an entirely different brand of football. When they have that kind of lead, they know the ball is going to be in the air with San Diego on the field anyway. And with San Diego behind, doubly so. And Chuck Muncy with that bruised shoulder, taking away the top runner from the Chargers. It's a first down. John, is, is Oakland changing their strategy in the defensive backfield? I think so. It's uh, simple to me that, that Oakland is doing what they would like to do. Hendricks is freelancing a lot. Of defense, and their front line is holding up without a lot of help from their linebackers. 28 to 7, Oakland leading. Thomas. He's to the Oakland 46 yard line. Willie Jones made the tackle. One thing that big lead has done for Oakland is to take some of the crowd out of the game. No question that you can quiet the home crowd, and that's one of your advantages when you're playing at home by putting some points on that board. Good job of mixing the play calling by the San Diego Chargers. Joe Gibbs, offensive coordinator, sending those plays in. Thomas again burrowing for the first down at the 43. Hendricks and Matuzak made the tackle. Clock running, 4.45 left in the half. You see the signals going in. Three men signaling on the side. And the man standing in front of Rick Tyne, he's the strength coach. He stands in front of the three of them to try and shield them from the opposing sideline. And you never know which of those signals is the official signal. That's, that's an interesting look. Bounce in 
incomplete. Burgess Owens was coming up quickly, and Jefferson with a tough chance. Owens, one of the many deals made by the Raiders this past year, acquiring him from the New York Jets. Owens, a number one pick by the Jets in 73. Here are those signals again. I, I don't know about you at home, but I didn't get that one. <laughs> I missed that one. Ron Smith, the hero last week with a touchdown that beat Buffalo, is in the huddle for San Diego. Smith, number 84 to the right, along with Jefferson on second and ten. Thomas. Out of bounds at the 33. That's close to a first down. Thomas from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, one of the top runners in Washington Redskin history. John Brody, is it difficult for a quarterback to be patient under these circumstances? You it, want to get a score on the board quickly. Maryland it is, but he doesn't have to worry about quickly. He's got 4.09 left in the second quarter. He's doing the right thing. They've taken a linebacker out. They've got five backs. It's a whole lot easier to run wide and up the middle on two occasions to pick up the first down to keep your drive alive. If he's a little bit patient, which I think Dan can be, he's got a good chance to move it in. Just short of the first down, as you saw, by a link of chain. Fouts, let's just check his mark here in the first half. He's thrown 16 times, nine complete, 171 yards, two intercepts. Plunkett, seven for nine, 188 yards. Even though he's thrown uh, seven less passes, he has more yardage than Fouts and two touchdown passes. Dick, one of the interesting things about this San Diego team is that Fouts can have a great day. They can still lose. In fact, of, of Fouts's 300 yard plus games he's had eight of those in this last year they lost three of those games three games when he threw for over 300 yards and they were still out of the ball game that's amazing Most one of those against Oakland by the way take 300 yards anytime four minutes left in the half Fouts looked as if he got the necessary yardage First down at the Oakland 32. One of the things that the Oakland Raider defense has done effectively all year long is to use their full complement of defensive players. Coach Flores and defensive coordinator Charlie Summer will mix up the personnel. They'll put in a four-man line. They'll put in a three-man line. They'll use Cedric Hardman, number 86, as a pass rusher. Use Willie Jones, number 90, as a pass rusher. They keep you off balance offensively. And Hardman and Jones are in there now at defensive end. And Jones almost got to Fouts, and Thomas unable to make the catch. And Fouts slow in getting up as number 90, Willie Jones in hard from the defensive left side. Jones working one-on-one -on, -one on number 60, Dan Ottick. Of course, one of the real blows and one of the few injuries to the San Diego Charger key personnel was to Russ Washington. Audic has taken his place, has had to do a lot of learning on the field, and unfortunately uh, has a way to go yet. Jones getting just enough of fouts to force that pass a little high. Second and ten. Thomas. Bumble. Bumble, Bumble again, and I believe it went right back to 63. Doug Wilkerson, the veteran guard from North Carolina Central. And that's a break for the Chargers. That ball popping free as Thomas has fumbled for the second time. I have to believe that you need to credit the defense. Watch the stripping action. Arms and heads. That's Ted Hendricks going right for that football, tackling the football. No one in football is around the big play more than Ted Hendricks. He has a nose for it. He's one of the people you love to have playing defense for you. Amazing man, top of all of his other talents. He has blocked more kicks than anyone in NFL history. Third and nine. For Thomas. First and goal at the seven-yard line. Four-yard play. A rare opportunity to see Dan Fouts run. He normally will not run, but he does here. He gets a little extra time, finds the open receiver. That, that was not a typical Fouts pass, but I'll guarantee you, he'll take that one any day. Bought himself some time as you saw Browning, 73, pressuring. It's first and goal at the seven. Thomas. 
to the four. Face mask. Rod Ooh. Martin and Dwayne Osteen on the tackle. Well, three three yards. Looked like Thomas was stripped right over backwards. Watch the final tackle on Thomas as he dives off the left side. Good job of adjusting. There was no hole there. That's Rod Martin. Oh, he's got it from the backside. Deep. Two-minute timeout given in San Diego. It comes with a minute 58 seconds left in the half. San Diego trying to cut into the lead. Here's Kellen Winslow's block on that last play. He's responsible for the linebacker, Rod Martin. Martin doing a good job of getting off. And he gets a hold of the backside, pulls Thomas right over backwards. I just saw the head go back. I thought he had a hold of the face mask of the helmet, but he had a hold of his shoulder pads, pulled him right over backwards. That had to hurt. Second and goal, San Diego at the four-yard line of Oakland. They trail the Raiders 28-7. to Less than two minutes remain, first half. Bouts to Thomas. And they've got him for a loss. <laughs> You think that on top of everything else, Lester Hayes isn't strong? Picked him up like he was a 10-pound bag of sugar. One of the things that makes Lester Hayes unique is the package that he has of great speed and strength. A very unusual athlete. Watch him just pick Thomas up here. I'm going to take you home with me. <laughs> he got him up off the ground. <laughs> Ball at the 8-yard line. Third and goal for San Diego and a near must scoring opportunity for Fouts. A crucial situation for Fouts. He needs that seven points. Triple left with Joyner in motion. Joyner. Jefferson caught that touchdown. His second of the day. John, take the replay. John. I'll tell you what he's doing. What he's doing is using three wide receivers to the same side of the field. All that is set up because Greg McCrary is back in the game. It allows him to use different formations. He used a lot of patience with those formations. As a result, put on a great drive. A most important touchdown for San Diego before the half. They've cut the Raider lead to 28-14. The Raiders have a minute five seconds to get back some more themselves. Veteran Charlie Joyner with his second touchdown reception makes it 28-14. They have bruised the forehead or eye and catching that ball. There are the numbers, 64 yards in 13 plays. Fouts to Joyner for the score. Moody. Whittington drift back for the Raiders. Raiders also have some men up tight looking for a possible onside kick. Whittington. Flags are down. Might have been a fumble, and San Diego says they've recovered. They have. There's another flag back at the spot of the kickoff, and I believe the Chargers may have been offside, in which case, nullifying penalties. That's against San Diego. Against nullifying, and oh, what a break for the Raiders. So they kick it over. Silence in the stadium. Absolute silence. I did not see the Raider penalty, but it did look as if one of the San Diego men was in front of the kicker. Whittington had trouble written all over that one from the start. Trouble getting his hands on it. Again, the ball stripped away. Edwards doing a good job of getting his, his fist into the ball. And the Chargers thought they had themselves a marvelous opportunity to get another seven points on the board. So the small things, offside on the kickoff, and it cost San Diego. 
Lawrence was guilty of illegal use of the hands for Oakland. It's got to deflate you a little bit. You saw that tremendous burst of emotion from the San Diego bench and from the San Diego players on the field, and then suddenly taken away from them. They've got to regenerate now. They've got to get themselves back into the game, and they've got to make certain that they don't allow Plunkett and his Oakland Raiders to come down the field and get more points on the board. They've gotten back to within, within range now. One minute left in the half. Anushka will kick it again. receiver's perspective. Whittington gets another chance. Ooh. He's down at the 20-yard line. Glenn Edwards made the tackle again. Let's go to John Brody. Dick, we see, I mentioned Greg McFerry set it up. There's three wide receivers, Jefferson, Joyner, and Winslow on the same side of the field. Joyner cuts underneath, gets it on Otis McKinney one-on-one. -on -one. You can't cover all three. Fouts picked the one that was open. Touchdown, San Diego, 54 seconds left. They're back to within 14. All right, John Brody and Len Dawson, great to have their expertise with us. As we said earlier, they'll be in New Orleans for the Superdome. Bring us their insight as they follow the quarterbacks and the focal point of the respective offenses. And it'll be Philadelphia representing the National Conference against the winner here today. On the ground of Whittington. To the 22, Ray Preston with a tackle. Number 22, Arthur Whittington. That fumble by Whittington on the kickoff return may have sobered the Raiders. Had they any thoughts of trying to march downfield quickly? You get the feeling when you get that one back, you might be better off just hanging on to it and run out the clock. San Diego calling a timeout. They would like to force Oakland to deal with a fourth down situation if they can. Tom Flores has had his team in much better field position throughout. And of those six possessions for touchdowns. Interesting how field position can dictate in a ball game. Obviously, uh, Oakland has a couple of had a couple of opportunities to start well within San Diego territory. Once on the 49 and once on the 29. Both of those resulted in touchdowns. Halftime will have highlights, some interesting features for you. So stay with us. You saw Jim Plunkett along the sidelines and Don Coriel studying his notes. I'd like to send along our best to Jim's mother. Blind, as most everyone knows, and listens to the games up in San Jose, California, and follows her son by radio. And Jim says that mom sometimes can't quite handle the pressure. She gets up and has to take a walk, get away from the get away from the sound on television or from the radio sound. But certainly as any mother would, just uh, pulling for her son to reach that goal of the Super Bowl. How nice it is to see someone who's been written off come back and have the kind of year, the kind of second opportunity that Jim Plunkett has had in this season. That courage in the entire Plunkett family reflected in the young quarterback. Draw play to King, and the Chargers had that one well read. Two-yard loss. Preston again made the stop. Another timeout. And a timeout call by San Diego to stop the clock. 37 seconds remaining in the first half. We'll be right back after these messages from the National Football League. All conference championship game here in San Diego. The Oakland Raiders using turnovers to build up a three-touchdown lead. San Diego has gotten one of those back. Third down and 10, Oakland at its 20. Chandler and Branch both to the left. King. Gain of only one. Bob Horn, along with Glenn Edwards on the tackle. Clock stopped again by the Chargers with 31 seconds left. That's their final timeout. Lonnie Dawson, a quick question for you. Anything that Oakland has done in this uh, 
first half that has really surprised you or shocked you? Well, I'll tell you, Merlin, I'm really surprised a couple of plays that Plunkett, he's the big play man. He came up with a couple of plays, some touchdown passes, but to Cliff Branch, it was third and 20 on two occasions, and Plunkett came up with the throw right on the money that came up with the first down and kept those drives going, and they scored after that. So Plunkett is li are living up to his reputation as the big play quarterback. There's his speedy receiver, Branch, who on third and long was able on the first occasion to get open deep and on the second take a short pass and use that blinding speed to race to a first down. John, John do, you, do you think that the uh, the feeling in the second half is going to change? What does San Diego have to do to get back into this game in the second half? I think very much that Oakland is in a dangerous position. San Diego took enough time to get a touchdown, almost got a turnover. They're in a place right now if they get a good punt return, they could put three more on the board. It's very dangerous to try and contain the ball against San Diego. Oakland better go out and continue what they were doing. Beautiful kick again. Fuller at his 19. 25. 31. Clock stops with 19 seconds left on the change of possession. Lindsey Mason downfield to make the tackle for Oakland. 60-yard kick by Raymond Guy. 13 yards on the return. Not only a 60-yard kick, but miles high. Incredible hang time, allowing people to get down underneath the kick and cover it. I, I'm sure that his average in the first half is well over what he averaged in that Houston game. He averaged 51 yards a kick on nine kicks. I'll bet his average is better than that today. It's going to be close. A sensational weapon, Raymond Guy. Fouts facing a defense playing very loose. Owens is at his own 40-yard line. Complete and out of bounds to Jefferson with 14 seconds left. Guy's average today is 59 yards, point three in this first half. John Jefferson, just an extraordinary talent. He's going to a spot on the sideline, wants to arrive there at the same time the football does. <laughs> you can't do it any better than that. No, sir, and the happy feet of Jefferson again. How difficult it must be to follow him. Fouts. Almost intercepted by Davis, and he had a lot of room in which to run ahead. And may have been guilty of looking ahead. Willie Jones, meanwhile, applied the heat on Fouts to force that pass awry. Eight seconds left. Jones and Fouts, of course, I think would like to go back and recall that one. He has thrown a couple of bad passes today. That one under pressure, but still not the kind of pass he dared throw here. Chargers would like at least a long pass out of bounds for a field goal try. They have no timeouts to use. Ted Hendricks is playing shallow center field in the defense. Incomplete. Excellent defensive play by Dwayne Osteen to jar the ball free from Jefferson. Three seconds left. Defensive backs need to react very quickly to the football. You're watching the quarterback often, although in a man-to-man -man situation, you play the receiver. You see Osteen there playing the receiver all the way, going right for the football. The Oakland Raiders, one of the few teams in football that still are in a basic man-to-man -man setup, and they'll challenge you. Interesting, the black and silver, they like to be different. One of the ways they are different is their ability to their ability to go man-on-man -man with good receivers. Burgess Owens is at the five-yard line as they look for that long pass, and here it comes, up for grabs. Incomplete. And that is the end of the first half in San Diego. Yeah, we expected plenty of offense, and that's what the first 30 minutes have provided. Turnovers by San Diego, and the opportunistic Raiders taking advantage. And at the intermission, the score, Oakland 28, San Diego 14. Our score at halftime of today's AFC title game has the Oakland Raiders out in front of the San Diego Chargers by a score of 28 to 14. Dick, Merlin, I guess the story of the first half, quite simply, is the story of turnovers. The Chargers have been sloppy. No question about that, Bryant. In fact, uh, the turnover possibilities were set up very early. Two teams that 
in, in San Diego's case, they they bounced the ball around. They've had interceptions, and Oakland very opportunistic in the way they've handled them. You know, when it rained this morning, Brian, I think a lot of the players woke up with the same feeling that, uh-oh, that's another thing to worry about, the rain, and maybe with the bad weather, uh, there might be the turnovers, and there were occasions where uh, the, that feeling uh, came out in this first half. I think in an emotional game, too, the ball tends to bounce around a little bit more. The Raiders have hit, I think, harder than uh, San Diego the first half. A lot of good hitting. Dick Merlin, it appears to Mike and I down here as if Oakland's front line is just handling San Diego's front, defensive front. Is that the way it looks to you upstairs? I think they've certainly given uh, their quarterback Plunkett a lot of time to throw, and that vaunted rush has gotten to him a couple of times, but very late. He's had time to throw the football, and often much more than they would like to allow him. And San Diego, don't forget, they were down twice deep in Oakland territory, Bryant, and coughed up the ball. If they score, we have an even game at 28 at the intermission. Okay, Dick Merlin, thank you much. Our score at the intermission is 28-14. Let's turn our attention to the first half. It was the first half that the Chargers would sooner forget. Their problems began, actually, on the third play from scrimmage. You see Jim Plunkett there. Third play from scrimmage, he bounced one off the hands of Kenny King into the arms of Raymond Chester. Well, you recall the John Mackey rule. Raymond Chester took it the other way, 50 six yards suddenly the silver and black is up by a score of seven nothing but this one was a wild one from the start first play from scrimmage for the chargers dan fouds up top into the hero of last week ron smith 55 yard strike looked like san diego was going to come back and tie the ball game immediately but instead lester the interceptor look at this the man has five pickoffs during the postseason to go with 13 in the regular season it stopped the san diego drive Still, Dan Fouts did manage to tie the ball game up by going upstairs one more time. When you're in a clutch situation, you look to number 18, Charlie Joyner. Dwayne Elstein was all inside his jersey on this play, but instead, Joyner comes away with the ball. Just like that, San Diego had tied the ball game at seven. It was left then to Jim Plunkett, who hit seven of his first nine passes to march his club down the field. He did that. Then, when he couldn't find a receiver, ran at the final five yards for a touchdown that put Oakland ahead by a score of 14 to seven. Following a Fouts interception, Plunkett in position again for a touchdown, 21 yards into the arms of Kenny King, 21-7 Oakland. Then after Williams coughed up the ball in a fumble, Mark Van Egan made it a 28-7 ball game. This was before Fouts into the arms of Joyner to cut it to 28-14. This as we near the end of the first half. So that's how we stand right now. Oakland's out in front of the scoreboard. San Diego, unfortunately, all out in front in the turnover department. We're going to get back in just a moment. We'll come back with highlights of the Philly game right after these messages from your local station. Joined now by Mike Adamley. We've been watching Oakland San Diego go at it for the second Super Bowl berth. Earlier today, Philadelphia decided the first one by turning back Dallas 20 to 7. And Michael, the hero of the game, was young Wilbert Montgomery. Now, coming into this one, everybody said, hey, he's a little guy who's been beat up. But from the opening gun, when he scored a touchdown, it was his ball game, 194 yards. Well, watch him go. This one went for 42 yards and gave Philadelphia a 7 0 lead all week long. Dick Vermeil had been selling wolf tickets, saying his team wasn't healthy. But watch Carl Hairston here. Well, he was... makes Danny white fumble this was in the third period after a 7-7 it set up a tony franklin field goal made a 10-7 white did not have the best of ball games it completed this one to jay saldi but tony dorsett with a fumble spoiled uh, spoiled the drive well, this touchdown pass went for 28 yards and as you said it made it 10-7 in favor of philadelphia but watch what happens here wearing the cursed blue jerseys number 33 usually reliable coughs up the ball and philadelphia has it and they're in business again well, it set up a Leroy Harris touchdown of nine yards. This after Jerry Robinson returned it. When Harris went over from nine yards out, it made it Philadelphia 17, Dallas 7. Fans of Philadelphia were going nuts in five-degree weather. Harris taking it 17-7. They added a Franklin field goal, and now it's 20-7. Um, Philadelphia the winner. Does that surprise you? Well, not at all, really. I think that uh, the key to the, here was we watched Wilbert Montgomery go 54 yards for the last touchdown of the game. And what a day he had. It's a new NFC championship game record. The key for Philadelphia, as it has been all year long, is to keep their key people healthy. Jaworski stays healthy. Wilbert Montgomery stays healthy. Philadelphia is going to win. I think also they got a great day out of their defense. Okay, let me ask you real quick. We're getting in a hypothetical situation. How does Philly stack up against either one of these teams as we look down the road to Super 15? Well, you know, they played them both during the course of the regular season. They whooped Oakland pretty bad, and they just lost to San Diego by a point. So I, I would say pretty well. Okay, final again from Philadelphia was Philadelphia 20 and Dallas 7. So we know what... They're ready to kick it off. Chris Barr back. San Diego gets the ball first. Very important that they get something going right now. Sure that 
They've had their conversations in the locker room. Let's see what happens with it. Bauer has it taken away from him by Frank Duncan, and he's toppled at the 24-yard line. And the Chargers, as you've said so many times during the course of this year, Merlin Olsen at first position to establish uh, momentum, uh, power in the second half is so very important. Pretty interesting first statistics. You look at the yardage, total yardage passing, 243 for the Chargers. But as I said earlier, the most important stat is what's happened at the end of those drives, not between the 20s and between the goal lines. And Oakland has been able to get that ball in the end. So look at the turnovers. None for Oakland, three for San Diego. And as we said at the start, Oakland has taken the ball more than any team in the NFL, and San Diego's coughed it up more. Ron Smith dancing out of bounds with a first down at the 35. 11-yard play to Smith, who cut only four all season, and then had, of course, the big touchdown pass last week to beat Buffalo. Offense for San Diego, directed by their all-pro quarterback, Dan Fouts, his running backs. And that, of course, you, you use that term loosely because San Diego does not run that much, and Chuck Muncie bruised a shoulder in the first half. We didn't see him in the second quarter. So Mike Thomas is the lone setback. Double tight end, that's Winslow with McCrary on the other side. Wide receivers, Joyner and Jefferson. Thomas dropped at the 35-yard line. Otis McKinney reacting quickly, number 23. The Oakland Raiders playing five defensive backs on first down. Daring San Diego to run the football. The Chargers tried to run, but were ineffective there. If they can't force Oakland to come in with the extra linebacker, they're going to be in trouble in this second half. Oakland stopped the running game of the Eagles in a game you saw here in NBC at midseason when Philadelphia rallied late to beat Oakland 10-7. A lot of time. Intercepted. Dwayne Osteen. A flag is down and Osteen fumbles and San Diego recovers. 63 Doug Wilkerson out to the 43 but I believe we're going to have interference against Osteen. John Jefferson back there waving everything back. He said, hey, bring the ball back here because they hit me before the pass arrived, which they did do. That was at the 46-yard line of Oakland. Now the Raiders trying to continue the pattern of pilfering Fouts passes, but Osteen a bit too rambunctious on that effort. Osteen, who was acquired from the Los Angeles Rams, has been a valuable acquisition. But he is the guy you almost have to go after in the secondary because you don't want to have to challenge Lester Hayes. Watch the end of the play here. With the ball in the air, Osteen will come over the top of Jefferson right there. And that's the penalty call. Doesn't he have a right to the ball to go to the ball? Not when he climbs over the top of the receiver <laughs> to get it. That was the argument by the Raiders. And, of course, they've lost it. From the 46. Bouts is down. Cedric Hardman has the first sack of the day for the Oakland Raiders. The veteran Hardman from North Texas State, an all pro with the 49ers and having a big year at the age of 31. So Bouts loses back to his 45. Bouts is not a terribly mobile quarterback. Tries to swing. To get away from Hardman, but Hardman strips him down, puts him on the ground. Second and 20 to go. Obviously, San Diego needs to get something going in the second half. Down 14, they can explode. But they need to get it going now. Joiner left, Jefferson right. The incomplete trying to find Jefferson in the middle of that. Oakland defense appeared they had a zone coverage on that time. Cedric Hardman again applying pressure on Fouts. I think the key for the Oakland Raiders is they've been able to get pressure on Fouts with four rushers. They haven't had to go to the blitzes that they have used in other games, and you don't want to blitz Fouts. Fouts scores when you blitz him. He reads the blitz. He takes advantage of it. They've been able to do it with that offensive line. Hardman, Matusak, Jones, Browning. They're doing a good job of attacking, and although they have not sacked a lot of times, they've not sacked Fouts, they have made him very uncomfortable in the pocket. Big third down throw. He's got Joyner. First down, 28-yard line. That's 
what makes the Chargers so exciting. There is no such thing as third and too long for Fouts. And here's the difference. Look at the amount of time that Dan Fouts has to work. He'll find the open receiver, and he'll drop it into the hands. Charlie Joyner, one of the most disciplined pattern runners in football. In motion, breaking up field. Watch him find the open territory. Hey, he said, here, <laughs> get it to me now. It was Jefferson who had five catches over 100 yards last week against Buffalo. Joyner now has five catches, 113 yards today, and both touchdowns. Thomas. And they caught Hendricks. Red dogging from the backside, and they ran away from Hendricks. And a good game by Mike Thomas before Martin and Owens can make the tackle. And that's exactly what San Diego must do to force the Oakland Raiders out of that five defensive back situation. There's room up the middle. Thomas gets in there quickly and takes advantage of it. San Diego has an opportunity now down inside the 20-yard line. Second down and a yard, uh, down with which to play for Fouts. Let's see if he goes for six. Solid hit. About at the 19, Rod Martin drilling Thomas. It looks as if it's enough for a first down as they spot it at the 18-yard line. Thomas went in aggressively and came out going the other way just as fast. Watch the shot right there. A powerful shot by 57 McClanahan, or 53 Rod Martin, actually. John Brody, you've been uh, following Fouts and the Chargers. Your thoughts? Well, the simple thing is, Dick, that that time Rod Martin made a wonderful play almost at the line of scrimmage, but he's got to cover about 12 yards around the middle of that line. They're, they're playing it with just Hendricks and Martin, and if they can't run up inside, throwing the ball is going to be very tough. They've been fortunate a few times, but it's going to get tougher and tougher down in close. Yeah, let's see if out stays on the ground. First down at the 18. Going deep. That was Jefferson and Hayes matched up. Two All-Pros. Jefferson nodding his head to Hayes as if to say, that was a legal bump. We were both going for the ball. Hayes with an interception in the first half, his fifth in the three playoff games. <laughs> you don't want to shake hands with Lester until he's had a very good shower. Watch the interaction between these two great players. Lester Hayes looking back, trying to find that football. Jefferson had 13 touchdown catches during the season, three of them against Lester Hayes, and there weren't many thrown on that man during the season. And Hayes with 13 interceptions. Ron Smith at the eight-yard line. That's going to be close to a first down. That's going to require a measurement. Dan Fouts again scanning the field. He finds the open man and drills the ball to him. Dwayne Osteen, 35, number 44, Burgess Owens. A little bit of space between them. Fouts takes advantage of it. They're going to measure for the first. And it's first and goal. Fouts to Smith, who had a little trouble controlling it, but able to latch onto it. This is the drive from the kickoff to open this second half. San Diego's marched steadily downfield to first and goal at the eight. Lots of time. Hit the crossbar. Jefferson and Joyner crossing in the end zone. Lester Hayes is right there covering again. Looked like there was room to run up the middle, but Dan Fouts is not a running quarterback. Ted Hendricks, number 83, played a very crucial role in this game as rusher, as defender. He's dropping back here in defense, looking for Jefferson coming across. Slipped a little bit, but there were just too many black shirts. The difficulty of throwing down there is you compress the amount of room the, the uh, offense has to work in. Second and goal at the eight. Look at the time. Oh, my! Jefferson will rarely drop that one. 
Jefferson hiding on the back line of the end zone and lost it through his fingertips. Fouts with all kinds of time to throw, but the philosophy, obviously, for Oakland, they're going to cover everyone, get everybody back defensively, and they're going to let Fouts throw that football. It, watch here. Jefferson is alone. The ball zipped to him. A little too much fire on that one. He could not handle it. Try to dance, try to twist around to get it before his toes came out of the end zone, but a couldn't do it. Great coverage by our NBC crew. Larry Cirillo, our producer, Ted Nathanson, our director. Third and goal. Again through the hands of Jefferson, who thought that Osteen had interfered. So two near misses for San Diego, and Fouts under pressure now will watch the field goal unit come in. Jefferson running a little better, just has trouble getting off the line, mistiming, and then cuts across the heels of Osteen. He makes those catches more often than he drops them. Indeed. Both of the last two chances, Jefferson, that's uh, easy picking for him. Rolf Bernerska from the 16-yard line, a 26-yard attempt. And San Diego settles for three. So the Chargers, with a solid drive downfield, get three, and it's now 28-17. San Diego gets three, but Jefferson thought he should have had six, John Brody. Dick, I think the amazing thing is that John Jefferson, the man that got him into this, this playoff title ball game, has dropped four balls that could have led to scores. One early in the second quarter, one toward the end of the half, and two in the end zone on this particular drive. He's the man that's won ball games for him. I think the encouraging part is Fouts is not going to go away from him. They'll be back down. You can count on that. Thanks, John. Bernerska's kick. Arthur Whittington, the 10, and to the 22-yard line to match the number on his back, the former SMU star. So the Raiders have the football for the first time in the second half. What do you expect, Len Dawson, from Jim Plunkett? Well, I know this, and he's going to have a wonderful opportunity on first down because they are ahead. I think you're going to see the linebackers of San Diego coming up close to the line of scrimmage to stop the run. They, he has not been able to get the ball beyond the linebackers because they get such great depth. I think on first down, it would be a great opportunity for the Oakland Raiders to throw some play-action passes and get behind the linebackers. All right, Plunkett, there are his first-half statistics. Branch and Chandler both to the right. Chester, the tight end, on the left. Plunkett's going to throw on first down. And one hops it to Chandler. Chandler was wide open. One of the things you notice about Plunkett, he throws some passes with great zip and accuracy, and other times it would appear that he loses confidence in a pass. He does not throw it with velocity, and the end result is that it ends up being a pass like that, poorly thrown and, and occasionally intercepted. Chandler back uh, very happy to be back on the West Coast. He was the one Raider who suffered some frostbite in the win at Cleveland last weekend. He's also playing with a dislocated thumb and a dislocated finger. Good protection underneath to Chester. And he is met solidly by Woodrow Lowe. At the plate, the number 80, Third down six. Walker getting a chance to examine the defense of the Chargers gets the opening here you see the crossing pattern number 88 Chester but well adapted to by the linebackers defensively you're willing to give them that shot up front but you got to get to the ball carrier to the receiver and shut him off from the extra yardage third and six we understand Lester Hayes receiving some Attention from the doctors and trainers on the Oakland Raiders sidelines for his calves. Plunkett. And San Diego's defense gets a cheer. Apparently Hayes is all right. That's the fifth sack by the Chargers. Leroy Jones, his mother Josephine, down in... Mississippi he hasn't seen her for two years. He wants to get to the Super Bowl because Mama's going to get her tickets and they can have their reunion. 
Raymond the, Guy. The early momentum here, Dick, offensively and defensively, swinging towards San Diego. They've still got a long ways to come to get themselves back into a tie with Oakland. Only Fuller back, 10 men on the line for San Diego. Oh, they almost got it. Glenn Edwards was close. Fuller at the 31. 45. He's all the way to the 41 yard line. <laughs> 28 yards for Fuller after a 46 yard guy punch. Sometimes Ray Guy kicks the ball so far that it's hard to carry. Hard to get, get down there to make the tackle. Unusual to have a good return off a play of this kind. With the block coming, there's no organized block, or there's no organized return. And we're very lucky that's almost all individual effort coming back. Mike Fuller, a great effort. Mike Thomas takes it to the 38 of Oakland. We have eight minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Oakland... Leading first, 7-0, then San Diego tied, then Oakland ran off three touchdowns, 28-7 before the Chargers scored late in the first half. San Diego's first possession of the second half led to a field goal. After three plays and a punt, San Diego back in business. Second down and seven. Bouts to Winslow. That's his first catch today. And a first down. Winslow, going into the second half of this game, had completed more passes than he had caught. Remember, he had that long pass in the first half. Excellent play. Fouts getting a lot of time. Zips this one on a string. And Winslow, what a graceful athlete he is for a man that tall. No question. People are going to go looking for Kellen Winslow's and try and put him at tight end, if they can find him. First down. And a whistle. There was movement before the snap. Jefferson. All for naught. Mike Thomas might have nudged forward before the snap. Full start. Offense. So that will cost San Diego five yards. Philadelphia beat Dallas 20 to 7. These two teams both were engaged with the Eagles during the course of the regular season. Just to refresh your memory. Full start. Moving before the snaps. Snap number 62, 67. First down. San Diego defeated Philadelphia here 22-21, and Oakland lost at Philadelphia 10 to 7. Uh, no matter who wins. This game in San Diego, it appears, will be a great rematch with the Eagles two weeks hence. Winslow in motion. The throw to Thomas. Winslow with a block. And Thomas all the way to the 18. That's close to a 15-yard game. Thomas has had a tremendous load. Since the injury to Muncie, he's had to be running game and now pass receiver. But literally a running back, once that ball is in his hands, he knows where that first down yardage is. He looks like he may have gotten it. Well, they cleared out with Winslow, and there's number 80 Winslow throwing a block on Osteen. Good play. Just short. Don Coriel's Chargers second down in inches. John Brody, question for you. Is this a gambling down? Second no, down I, in inches? Merlin, I think it's a situation where it's better to have second down in inches than it is to have first and ten. They've got they've got three downs to pick up a first down. They would love to have the ball first down. I, I think he'll do something simply to keep the drive alive. I don't think he's going to fire the ball in the end zone. Some, some people might predict that. And if, and if he does, they've still got Matt Millen in the ball game. Their short yardage defense is there. If they've got a good play, they'll probably use it. Well, I'll tell you, defensively, your philosophy has to be we protect for the pass because uh, you got to be frightened of the ability to throw this down away. Chargers with a solid third quarter trying to pull ever closer. Winslow 
Flags are down. Winslow to the eight-yard line. against the Raiders. That'll be declined. It's first and goal. San Diego at the eight. Now it was at this spot on the opening drive of the half that the Chargers stalled and had to come in with the Bernerska field goal. But stalling is perhaps not the proper term because John Jefferson had two touchdown chances and uncharacteristic of him could not latch on to either. Holy three defense before the pass penalties decline first down Ted Hendricks trying to slow someone down first and goal at the eight and this Charger crowd starting to believe again with 653 left in the third quarter Thomas to the six Reggie Kinlaw from Oklahoma, the middle guard for the Raiders, made the stop. Here comes Chuck Muncie back into the ball game for the first time since early in the game. Six and a half minutes left in this third quarter. Muncie obviously in the game because of his physical stature, short yardage, running game. That's the work of big men, and Muncie's one of the biggest backs in the NFL. They like to run him to the left. There he goes. Touchdown! Chargers have scored 10 points in this third quarter. Once down 28 to 7. They've now pulled a 28-23. Mike Fuller will hold for Benerska. It was Fuller's punt return that set up the score. it exactly right. They like to put Muncie over that left side. He gets excellent blocking. Big Ed White, number 67. Wilkerson, 63, out in front of him. But he could have gone a long ways further if he'd had to. So is 6-13 left in the third quarter. Oakland's lead is four. See the total number of drives, six, 59 yards, but this is the crucial play. Muncy coming behind the excellent blocking of his offensive line, hurling himself into the end zone. Well, that's just like it was drawn in Coriel's playbook. Great execution. 28-24, the kickoff for Nurska. Moody and Whittington deep. It's Whittington. Jerome Dove was there first at the 22-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown. Let's see why uh, Muncie had such a wide open route. Well, Dick, it's interesting to note that the two people in closest pursuit are Otis McKinney and Cedric Hardman, both passing situation for defensive football players. They thought Muncie was in there as a decoy. They knew his shoulder was bad. He surprised them, put it down, and slipped it in. Otis McKinney and Cedric Hardman on this side, five defensive back situation. They fooled him, ran it in the end zone. Kellen Winslow with a great lead block. This crowd giving Plunkett problems, just hearing Van Egan plows to the 26. Kelcher and Horn with the tackle. The Oakland Raiders cannot afford to think at all about just running out that clock. A three-point three lead against the San Diego Charger team is nothing. They can explode on you instantly. Four points, 28-24 the score. The tackles never could have. Did. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> Second down Or seven. subtract. Kenny King, bubble, 
Or was that something that looked like the ball was free? I guess it was just somebody's shoe seemed to fly there. Kelcher made the tackle as King with a burst of speed. Has a Oakland first down at the 34. See that play again. Kenny King getting a good shot here. Dave Dalby, number 50, crawling over there to get into the block. Louis Kelcher. But he has the first down. That's the initial first down of the second half for the Raiders. Lock it. To King. Look at that speed. Caught from behind at the 45-yard line by Willie Buchanan. King electrifying. That's the man that ran 89 yards for a touchdown against the Chargers in the game at Oakland. 22-yard play, and that's the kind of explosiveness that King was not capable of during the last half of the season because of that ankle. Watch him accelerate. Now watch him. See the opening and just burst for it. Almost broke away. Shoestring tackle by there by one of the secondary kept him from getting out of there, but they're inside Charger territory down the 44-yard line. Four minutes, ten seconds left in the third quarter. Oakland 28, San Diego 24. Plunk it to Chester, who came back to meet the ball. And Chester's to the 25, and another Oakland first down. In case you joined us late, Chester was the man who caught a deflected pass. King was the intended receiver, went through his hands to Chester, and he went for an opening touchdown of 65 yards. Chester, for all of you receivers out there, watch what he does when the quarterback gets in trouble. Comes back to the football and makes a great play after he gets the football. Round to get the extra yardage. Chester knows, noticing that Buck's in trouble. He says, here I am. And he ran right away from Mike Fuller. First down at the 26. King. To the 18-yard line. Oh, is he quick. Mike Williams at the corner for San Diego made the tackle. And Fouts waiting his turn. Eight yards for King at second and two. And on the tackle, number 42. The first down at the 15. Three minutes and 20 seconds left in the third quarter. And we're all excited, as you well can imagine, to be sharing with you that Super Bowl experience two weeks from today. The entire crew will be in the Superdome in New Orleans. It's a big, big day, so make your plans, have your parties, join us early. A spectacular pregame show. NFL 80 is arranged, and then the action. The Eagles will meet the winner of this game. Jim Plunkett can get it in the end zone here. He certainly improves the chances for his Oakland Raiders to be in that game. That's Branch in motion. Van Egan. Nicely read by Fred Dean, who trailed the play and made the tackle. Picked up two yards. Tackle by number 71, Fred Dean. Dean. Lots of pressure on the defense here. Dean, primarily a pass rusher. But because of his great speed, able to make that kind of play from behind. He's had chronic groin problems. It's been difficult for him during the last part of the season. Watch the acceleration here. That's a, that's a back he's running in behind, but he has great, great quickness. Van Egan with 32 yards rushing, King 29. So San Diego's really stopped the running game as you look into the eyes of Plunkett. King to the eight-yard line, short of the first down. Glenn Edwards dragged him down. And off to number 33. Defensively, the setup for maybe the biggest play of the day for this San Diego defense so far. Third down, about two and a half yards to go. What are you going to do? Well, Arthur, <laughs> Arthur Whittington brought in the play from the sidelines to Plunkett. Almost three yards for the first down. Whittington ran into his quarterback, and he has stopped. Now the play misfires. Red Dean with the ball, but going nowhere. And now the field goal unit comes on for Oakland. Tremendous penetration on the right-hand side. Watch the pressure coming in right there. 
It's Gary Johnson, I believe, 79, diving for him. He had to change the pattern of the play, and Whittington had no chance. But if you can get into the backfield and cause problems for timing, you can make that kind of play defensively. Chandler to hold at the 17, a 27-yard kick by Barr, who had his troubles here in the first game between these teams. Not on that one. Barr drills it through, and with 49 seconds left in the third quarter, the Raiders are back on top by a touchdown. The score in San Diego, Oakland 31, the Chargers 24. Well, when we these two teams met, the first two times this year, not unlike this one. They were equally exciting games. We did both those games. We saw these two teams battle on equal terms, although I think Oakland, actually, even in the game they lost, outplayed the San Diego Chargers. Because you've got to feel the pulse of this stadium. These people believe their Chargers are back, and the Raiders are going to have to take it away from them. <laughs> it's 31 to 24 as Barr hits a long one. Bauer, the 10. Down at the 21-yard line. Tackle made by Joel Campbell, former New Orleans Saint, and number one draft pick out of Maryland. Well, Fouts has been hot since the score was 28 to 7. His team has outscored the Raiders 17 to 3. Fouts well, putting it in the air as always. And we have a timeout. 40 seconds left in the third quarter here in San Diego. And we're all going to need some air before this one's over. Oakland by a touchdown. Now a big week on NBC. That Bob Hope Desert Classic. And, of course, Bob's special next Sunday. 31-24. San Diego trails with the ball. The Chargers at the 22. Bouts going long for Jefferson. Incomplete. Dwayne Osteen on the coverage. Jefferson hit hard on the ground. John Brody take us into Dan Fouts huddle. I think, I think, Dick, when you start talking about the thoughts of Dan Fouts, there's one thing he has to guard against. He's home. I know he's excited. His group thinks they can score touchdowns at will right now because they're on a hot streak. But remember, Matt Millen is not in the middle. They're playing pass on first down, second down, and third down. You notice how, how, how little time he takes to throw the ball. But they've got to run something up the middle. I noticed they had Muncie in the last play. They've got to work something on the ground because Matusik has got to stay at home if they're going to keep him off the passing. Ted Hendricks can't get him. But Willie Jones does, and Fouts is sacked for the second time. Could well be the last play of this third quarter. 29 seconds left. It was Hendricks who forced Fouts to look elsewhere as he went firing in from a position on the opposite side from where you normally would find him. Doing his freelancing, he'll work all up and down that line, and he really makes it tough on the offensive linemen and the pickup people with backs who are supposed to be taken care of. But again, it's that, that bad matchup for San Diego. Willie Jones on Dan Otick that cost him the sack. See if Fouts gets a playoff before the end of the third quarter, 14-13-12. Greg McCrary is in at tight end. Jefferson and Joyner both to the right. This is third and 15. Jefferson slipped as he made his cut. One second left in the quarter. And Fouts very slow in getting up. It was Hendricks again coming in hard. Watch Jefferson as he makes his cut here plants that foot and just trips and that's dangerous because that ball is already in the air meanwhile Kellen Winslow took quite a pop Monty Jackson 42 on the coverage I see he pulled a muscle he pulled a calf muscle did Winslow that should not be serious looks like it might be a cramp Dick. Partridge oh short kick but it takes a nice bounce for San Diego. Ira Matthews is to the 49 of Oakland. Tackle made by Hank Bauer, and that is the end of the third quarter at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. The score after three, Oakland 31, San Diego 24. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. <laughs> They're still very much alive in San Diego. Friday was San Diego Charger Day. I understand all the school kids, elementary through high school, all wore their blue and yellow. 
the spirit, the Chargers, and they're down to 15 minutes to go. 31-24 the score. The Raiders in front. Oakland good field position at its 49. Van Egan to the 37-yard line and a first down for the Raiders. Third quarter statistics. As you might expect, favoring the San Diego Chargers substantially, but tremendous yardage gained by, by both these teams so far in this game. Plunkett, Dick, has averaged 23.3 yards per pass completion today. You talk about the, the long bomb and going deep. He's done it today. And that's true to form for the Raiders. Nothing much there as Whittington to the 35, second and eight. Kellen Winslow receiving some attention, and from that expression, it would appear that he's studying a chess move. Uh, he's going to be all right. He was an outstanding, uh, and is an outstanding chess player. He said, uh, who's been your toughest opponent in chess? He said, I don't know. No one's beaten me yet. appearing to be asking for a little extra help. Second and eight. Wide open is Chester. Good tackle by Woodrow Lowe at the 30, short of the first down. Third and three for the Raiders. Len Dawson, now you take us under that helmet of Jim Plunkett. Well, I, we had mentioned before the show that he has to exercise patience. Do not turn the ball over because the Oakland Raiders get the ball from the other team more than anybody in the National Football League. He has done it. This is just the third possession that Oakland has had in the second half. They did get one field goal, and they're moving right now. So Plunkett's doing a great job. Woody Lowe making the tackle. Raiders are ready to put it in play on third and three. Kenny King back into the lineup. Flags are down. Wide open is Branch. And the speedster has a first down at the 24, but first the penalty. Several defenders jumping offside. Got to wonder if maybe one of the Oakland offensive linemen moved prior to the snap. No. Floor signaling the five-yard penalty against San Diego, and the Raiders, well, they gained about six on it. They'll take the play. Dick, normally uh, the San Diego Charger team is, is not prone to mistakes, but watch the aggressiveness here. 79, Johnson and Kelcher. I think Kelcher may be triggered by the action of Johnson. He's looking for that football out of his right eye, and he saw the action over there. I think it got him started. Oh, I don't think we've ever really made that point. You defensive lineman, you're, that's what you're looking at, the ball movement. You're reacting totally to that. You're not really looking at anything else specifically. Or to movement on the other side of the line. And when you see sometimes the movement out of the corner of your eye, that, that triggers you. 13 minutes, four seconds left. First down play. Van Egan to the 20. Louis Kelcher. You don't drag Big Louis very far. Same play that Van Egan made the gain a few moments ago on, cutting back against the grain, starting to the right side, and then knifing back to try and take advantage of, of the lack of pursuit by San Diego from that right side. Big number 74, Louis Kelcher. Left tackle. Watch him here. He's going to react back to the play now. Good job of getting back to it. They sealed off Gary Big Hands Johnson. Had Louie not gotten a hold of that runner, Van Egan would have made some fine yardage on that play. Van Egan. And he was well covered. Fuller, the safety man. Third down and six. Remember, the Raiders have a seven-point lead. A field goal for them in this situation gives them a fine opportunity to force San Diego to have to get two big scores. So we would think that Plunkett will play it carefully if he does not find a man open. Plunkett getting quite a bit of help in his game plan today. Receivers coming in, backs coming in with plays from the sideline. Complete to Chandler at the 10-yard line. 
It'll be first and goal for the Raiders. A flag. I thought I saw a flag drop in the end zone. I mean, that's just something from the fans, but there is a yellow something in the end zone. Apparently, flag. apparently just some uh, fan refuse. Gene Upshaw talked about the importance of giving Plunkett time. Plunkett actually scrambling here. Gets enough time by stopping, finding some open territory. He has done that so well today. Bobby Chandler playing with those two bad hands. I don't know how a man can catch the football as well as he can. Dislocated thumb on one hand, dislocated pinky on the other. He said this is the first week that he hasn't had splints on both of those fingers. That's amazing. And uh, with those soft hands of his, he gave them the first and goal, and now it's second and goal from outside the seven. And all the time, the Raiders chewing up the clock. 11-15, 11-14, 11-13. There is the item they thought might have been a flag deep in the end zone. One of the cards is a uh, Charger Power. Both receivers to the left. Chandler with Branch in the slot. Van Egan again cutting back inside to the three. Dean and Kelcher the tackle. Boy, two pro bowlers that have played outstanding football defensively for Don Coriel. They put big Wilbur Young in place of Gary Johnson. Wilbur playing the run more efficiently. But Van Egan still running that same play, starting the action to the right, cutting back against the green, got a, getting good yardage in that particular play. Oakland on third and goal brings in some extra beef. Todd Christensen, tight end or a fullback. Derek Jensen in there as well. So it's Van Egan and Jensen. And Plunkett doesn't like the defense and calls time. Now Plunkett, you'll recall, in the game at Cleveland, called time down by the goal line, talked it over, came back with the same play, and that was the winning touchdown scored by Van Egan. Timeout, 10 minutes, 18 seconds left. Oakland by seven. 52,000 fans, partisan crowd in San Diego. The Raiders scored first on a freak tip pass that went from King to Chester, 65 yards. They've led throughout. They were tied at seven. Then Oakland using turnovers to full advantage, scored three straight touchdowns to lead, 28-7. San Diego has scored before the half minute, 28-14. Chargers a strong third quarter, but now the Raiders leading. 31-24 have a chance to take more than a touchdown lead. This is third and goal. Plunkett. He didn't fool anyone. Good throw low. The big play man, the linebacker from Alabama, low, read it all away. You have to take some risks defensively in a situation like this. The blitz is on, 51 low. Bucket has no chance to get out of the way. They not only take the down away from him, but they've taken what was a chip shot for a field goal and stretched it out a little bit. It will be now a 32-yard field goal, maybe 33 as Barr comes in. Three points it is for the Oakland Raiders. Timeout. Nine minutes and 46 seconds left. And the Raiders now enjoy a 10-point advantage. Charger power in San Diego. They were dressed like that in Philadelphia today as well. Barr nails a line drive through the hands of Bauer. That's a muff and goes out of the end zone for the touchback at the 20. Oh, we have a moment. Just want to give credit to Chris Barr. He had his problems kicking through the course of the year. In fact, in the first game of the season here at San Diego, he was one for six field goals, but he's been perfect in the playoffs, making all nine points after and four of four field goals. They get a lot of booze to those kickers when they miss, and let's give them credit when they're solid. It's quite a comeback. There are a lot of comeback stories on the Oakland side of the field. Dan Fouts has Chuck Muncie behind him. That's Jefferson in motion. Ron Smith splits right. Joiner to the left. Fouts going long for Smith. Incomplete, and he had beaten Monty Jackson. Jackson just stayed close to him and hoped that he could look at the right time. 
and measuring the time for the quarterbacks all day. Let's check fouts on that last toss. Relatively a deep pass, about a 25-yarder downfield, but thrown in 1.9 seconds. And he had to throw that quickly because Willie Jones was coming right over the top after him. The ball on target, but just too difficult to handle when you've got a defender right on top of it. Monty Jackson, who played college ball here at San Diego State and was a top player with the Rams. In fact, led the NFL in interceptions with the Rams uh, four years ago. Smith. And again, it's Jackson to break it up. Monty's brother Terry, a member of the New York Giants club. Monty has not played much. He's had some injury problems this year and held only one interception. It looked like Smith pitched on that one. It looked like he had a chance maybe to accelerate and, and get his hands on it. May have misjudged the football. There's old Highway 63 on the sidelines. Gene Upshaw, 23rd playoff game for Upshaw. Let's see out of the ball game. Thomas in. One back. Four receivers. Three wide receivers plus Winslow. He's on the right side. Now it's a triple right. And wide open is Joyner. Osteen knocks him out of bounds at the 36. First down, San Diego. Joyner's had a big day for Don Coriel. Fouts with Joyner all the way on that pass. Charlie, as we said, is one of the most disciplined receivers in football. Crafty veteran who announced uh, to his teammates early this year that he was thinking about finishing it this year. But they're trying to talk him into staying around. He has had a rather remarkable season. And a remarkable day. Six catches, 130 yards, and two touchdowns for Joyner. Approaching the nine-minute mark of this fourth quarter. Ten-point lead for Oakland. Muncie, he's got some blockers. Down he goes with a first down at the 48-yard line. Willie Jones made the tackle. Wide receivers must do more than just catch passes. Number 84, Smith, on 8, 83, Hendricks, got enough of Hendricks to bother him, give him some trouble, and Muncie got outside of Hendricks, got into the secondary, made a nice gain. Willie Jones shake it up on the play. The trainers come all the way across from the Oakland side. Smith also shake it up. Found out that Hendricks is hard as rocks out there. The clock, by the way, Dick, now an enemy for the San Diego Chargers. They'd like to be able to mix their plays. They need to run occasionally to keep the defense honest, but they also need more than a touchdown to get back in this game. They've got to move it down the field as fast as they can. Kenny King on the sidelines as both players appear to be okay. Jones and Smith. Jones heading toward the Raider bench. Dan Fouts again to give the fans a measure of appreciation of his talent. And the quarterback throws for, well, we'll ask our gentleman Len Dawson and John Brody. You throw for 300 yards. You've had a big day, but Fouts had eight of those this year. An unprecedented season. He's over 300 yards again today. Was that your measuring stick, John, uh, for a big day? Not at all. I think you can look on the other side of the coin and see that Plunkett's had an exceptional day, but he's been able to pick and choose. Fouts is in a situation where he's got to throw the ball with nine minutes, as you alluded to, and he hasn't got that luxury. Almost intercepted by Monty Jackson as Fouts' throw came up short as he was being drilled by the defensive charge of Dave Browning. What about you, Lonnie Dawson? We talked to John about the uh, 300-yard day. Was that a measuring stick for you, or were you more concerned about the score on the board? <laughs> Merlin, you know, the only the only measuring stick is when you look up at the end of 60 minutes and you have more points than the opposition. But I think both quarterbacks have done a very good job. But John is right. Plunkett has had no turnovers. That's the difference in this ballgame right now. Routes has been intercepted twice. Under pressure, batted in the air. Volleyball spike by that Raider front four. Browning and Hendricks were both there. And that was Ted Hendricks, number 83, coming all the way around behind. He'd moved all the way down to the right end and come all the way back around. San Diego knows that Hendricks is going to be coming. And yet here he is, still able to get there from the backside along with Matuzak, number 72, I believe, coming in from the left side of your screen combination deadly for Fouts. He's facing a tough situation here, third and ten. At Matuzak, not a bad spike man at 6'8". Hendricks is 6'7". Browning 6'5". Hardman 6'4". Third and ten. 
open. Winslow. And he gets out of bounds. First down at the 31. And Bouts with some more third down magic. Bouts has been magnificent in the tough situations today. But look at that receiver. Give him some credit, too. Winslow finding the open territory. Looks like he's still having trouble with that calf. Running with a little problem here. Breaking outside. Scooping that one off the ground. Excellent catch. Good hands by Winslow. Caught 89 this year to lead the NFL. And he stopped the clock with 8.32 left. Muncie and Hendricks guessed right. Mike Davis also in support. Raiders felt that uh, might be time for a changeup. Hendricks had started inside. I'm sure they'd made some adjustments in their starting and their blocking assignments. And then quickly, at the snap of the ball, moved back outside. No room for Muncie to get through there at all. But what a career for Hendricks. He was three times an All-American at the University of Miami, Florida, and now five times an All-Pro. He wasn't drafted until the second round by Baltimore, despite his All-American status, because they thought he was too skinny. position when hit by Jackson. Looked like he was going to catch it, just snatch it out of the sky with those big hands of his, but he went down hard and twisted as he went down. Watch the play here. Up high in the air, grabs that football, and Jackson pulling him down from behind. You see the twist. Winslow's back is twisted as he comes down, but he's up, he's moving, and you hear the response from this San Diego crowd. They love Kellen Winslow and the big plays that he has brought to San Diego this year. You see him twisting as he goes down. Monty has a hold of his head. Well, he told us where the secret to those soft hands of his. Maybe we get a chance later and gets back in there. We'll share it with you as Ooh. he told us the story. First down on the penalty at the 25. Early movement in the line by the Chargers. That'll cost them five. The right-hand side of the line looked like Dan Otic. A little quick and getting off. A lot of mistakes by the San Diego team today. Unusual for them. They're a well-drilled, well-coached, efficient veteran team, but they have made a lot of crucial mistakes, a lot of penalties today. False start, 67 moving before the snap first down and white and they ticketed although both white and audit moving before the snap the oakland raiders have led throughout they're in front 34 to 24 the winner to the super bowl against the eagles seven minutes 42 seconds left this is first and 15. is that a fumble uh -oh. And it's Hendricks again. The Raiders have the ball as Ted Hendricks has just done a pickpocket, but there's a flag downfield. And we'll see. We may have something against the Raider defense. So San Diego retains possession. A crucial mistake against Monty Jackson. Greg McCrary has been on the field for a good part of the day, in spite of that painful back injury. But he's also had some problems doing his job out there. On that particular play, he was assigned to block Ted Hendricks. Got a good push off on him, but Hendricks was the man that took the ball out of Fouts' hands. Illegal contact, 42, defense, first down. Oh, a big turnaround instead of Oakland with the ball. San Diego still is deep in Raider territory. There's the action right there outside of that five-yard zone and still contact. 
And of course, that's illegal. You see the flag coming in right at the heels of Monty Jackson, number 42. Last three plays have resulted in penalties, two against Oakland. Muncie. getting good blocking and you've got to mix it up offensively especially when you've got those five well, Kellen, wins Kellen Winslow again with a nice block Merlin Kellen's had a big day he's making a first block and then he comes back for a second one beautiful cut down there that's the one that sprung him for those last seven eight yards first and goal almost the full ten yards to go for San Diego draw to Muncie bubbles and did he get it back yes Oh, that brought some hearts up into San Diego throats. Raiders think they got the ball, but it's ruled that San Diego retains possession. Look like Muncie ever really got his hands on that football. Let's let you look at it. Watch the handoff. It didn't appear that Muncie was able to get clear possession of that ball thinking ahead of where he was going to carry that ball and not concentrating on taking the handoff. They're lucky to get that one back. Muncie recovering his own fumble in a sea of black. Second and goal from the 10. John Floyd in the game for San Diego. Here's Muncie. Breaks the tackle. And he's to the 9-yard line. What an effort by Mike Davis to come up to slow down Muncie. NBC's exciting program, Chips, will be seen tonight in its entirety following the conclusion of our coverage from San Diego over most of these stations, except for most Mountain and Pacific time zone stations where Chips will be seen at its regular time. So stay tuned. We'll have it in its entirety right after the game. Third and goal. That was a big play by Mike Davis. Excellent tackle. Muncie, if he had been able to keep his balance, would have been very close to that goal line. Triple left formation. Fouts. Oh, had Winslow open and overshot him. Fourth and goal. And apparently, Coriel will go to the field goal. And Winslow limping again. Still having trouble with that calf. Stretched all the way out. I think perhaps a healthy Kellen Winslow would have made this catch. Almost a basketball play again, a double pick. And they throw it a little high to Winslow. You see him surge off that leg, and he comes up grabbing that right calf. An apparent 28-yard field goal. Vanerska drills it through. Six minutes, 52 seconds left. The Raiders still lead by a touchdown, 34-27. Dick Hanberg with Merlin Olsen in San Diego. Delighted to bring you this AFC Championship game. The Eagles had the top uh, defense against scoring in the NFL this year. No matter who they play, they know they're going to be seeing a lot of offense. Oakland 34, San Diego 27. And a wild championship game before 52,000. The sellout in San Diego. Benerska to Whittington. And he's out at the 25-yard line. Now the defense of the Chargers will try to stop the Raiders and get Dan Fouts in the offense the ball for a possible tying touchdown. I think he has to change at this point in the game, Dick. Offensively, Plunkett's major concern, don't turn the ball over. If he can, they'll control the football and eat that clock. They'd like to tick it down as much as they can. The defense, on the other hand, thinking turnover. Tackle the football, strip it. But don't let them move it down the field and eat the clock. The last two possessions by Oakland led to field goals and long drives, each of those drives consuming more than five minutes. Nearly five. Bob Horn, the middle backer from Oregon State, the tackler. 
six minutes and 30 seconds. We'll keep our eye on the clock. Oakland leading 34-27. The Raiders have been in front since the third play of the game when Jim Plunkett threw a pass over the middle to Kenny King, went through King's fingertips, deflected downfield, and Raymond Chester of the Raiders picked it off and completed a 65-yard scoring play. Raiders built the lead at 28-7. San Diego coming back to within four. Van Egan. First down as he gets 10 more. Preston and Horn, the tacklers. Philadelphia won earlier today as Dick Vermeil's tough eagles stop the Cowboys. 20-7, Philadelphia's first visit to the Super Bowl. We expected the Oakland Raiders to run at the right side of the Charger defense. No question that they have done that, especially late in the game, and they've made big yardage doing it. Staying on the ground at first down. Shows 531, 530, 529. Van Egan for four more. Stay with us here on NBC television tonight. After the conclusion of this game, for those that apply in the Eastern and Central time zones, you'll see chips followed by an outstanding motion picture magic in plate of excellent Sunday's entertainment on the National Broadcasting Company. That's later tonight, Chips and Magic, and of course at the regular times in the Mountain and Pacific Zones. Van Egan has really been a workhorse today, Dick. They're giving him a break. Derek Jensen, 31, into the backfield. Down to three seconds, two seconds, one second. Puckett just does get it off. Kenny King to the 46, where it'll be third and four. Louis Kelcher leading the way. A day that found the players awakening to the sound of rain, something that no one expected and that it has been nothing but sunshine here in the West for the last two months. But no rain during the course of the play. It stopped about noon today and certainly not a factor. 4.17 left. And it's a first down at the 48 to Arthur Whittington. Mike Williams made the tackle, and Plunkett gets another four downs. Plunkett under pressure. Louis Kelcher going all the way around on a double stunt. Plunkett throws a nice strike to Whittington, tucks it away carefully, and gets out of bounds. Here's the double stunt by Louis Kelcher. Watch him going all the way around the other tackle and the defensive end. But it's a quick timing pattern, and Plunkett gets it off. And now, Plunkett still eating the clock, moving it down the field. If he can do this, he can keep San Diego's offense off the field. Especially if he can get at least a field goal out of the drive. Van Egan, the plow horse, up the middle. What a reliable, dependable back he has been for the Raiders through his seven years in the league. We've talked a great deal about the passing game today, a great deal about the quarterbacks, but I've got to believe that the running game by the Oakland Raiders had been the key to their success. They've been able to balance it tremendously. Mickey Marvin, Gene Upshaw, Dave Dalby, Art Shell, Henry Lawrence have done an excellent job up front of making room for those ball carriers. And it was Derek Jensen, let's give 31 credit, who carried on that first down. This is Van Egan. And he is pinned by Fred Dean on top. We'll check who's underneath that pile. It is 51, Woodrow Low. Oh, third down again for the Raiders. The clock running to the three-minute mark. Big play. Fouts and the Chargers have all three timeouts left. Van Egan now has rushed for 70 yards, the top runner in the game. Both wide receivers to the right. Whoops. Wilbur Young invading the Oakland Raider backfield. Let's see if he was illegally invited. No. So it'll be now third and about one instead of third and six, and that changes the whole play call. We talked about mistakes. The fact that San Diego, which is a relatively experienced team, has made a lot of Stupid mistakes today, and that's a stupid mistake. Uh, not to be a little Wilbur Young because he's played some excellent football here, but 
you can't afford to give away five yards in that kind of situation. Plunkett now a much easier opportunity to pick up the first down and take some more time off that clock. And the way they're delicately measuring that spot, you can see from the hand of Cal Lepore that it's about six inches to go. 99 defense, third down. You see Big Wilbur, no one moving on the inside. Plunkett just getting out of the way. That's that's a lot of body coming at you. Wilbur guessed wrong out of William Penn College of Iowa. So Plunkett needs just short yardage and brings in some extra blockers. Raymond Chester and Derek Ramsey will book in the line. Todd Christensen is the wing back. Van Egan and King behind Plunkett. Van Egan. First down, and now it is really tough for San Diego. The clock running down toward the two-minute warning. Chris Barr anticipating a possible field goal, but now Plunkett hopes that they won't even have to kick one. They're going to try to chew up the clock. They don't need to run a play till the two-minute timeout unless San Diego uses one of its timeouts. Why wouldn't they call time here, Merlin? Well, they've only got three. And I'm sure that that has to be a concern for them. I mean, if they were going to call it, they should have called it instantly. They shouldn't have waited at all. Yeah, they let about 22 seconds go by until the two-minute warning, and Plunkett wisely will just let that official timeout occur. And now it's down to seconds. Timeout in San Diego. The Raiders have the ball and a big seven-point lead. Stay tuned, friends, for Chips and Magic, East and Central Time Zones. Of course, those two fine programs will be seen at the regular times in some of the western areas right after the conclusion of this game. Of course, we'll also go down into the locker room of the winners and the losers after this game. Oakland leads 34-27, two minutes left. No, Derek Jensen gets about two, maybe three up the middle. And timeout called by the San Diego Chargers. They have two remaining, 1.56 left. Clock running out on San Diego. The Raiders lead by seven in this AFC championship game. Second down and eight. One minute, 56 seconds left. The Chargers have spent one of their three timeouts. The Raiders, second and eight. And there's a lot of thought on that sidelines. They're looking for a big play. They need a turnover. Ball at the 32. Van Egan to the 29. Timeout, San Diego. It'll be about third down and four. The Chargers need the football. A reminder, two weeks from today, it'll be the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl against the winner of today's game. We invite you to tune in early Eastern time, 1 o'clock, for the NFL Year in Review, a spectacular show featuring the highlights of this great season. And there'll be some basketball for you as well as the Buckeyes host Virginia's Cavaliers. I don't know. I think that game's at Virginia. You'll see Big Ralph Sampson of the Cavaliers. And then the pregame at 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock Eastern time, 3 o'clock in the West, Super Bowl 15. And it'll be the Eagles. And right now, that team in the black and silver playing in its 10th championship game in 14 years. Dick, I can't help but remember an incident in the game we did here, the Charger-Oakland game. A critical fourth down situation. O Oakland down by seven points late in the game. Pastorini went down, and Plunkett had to come off the sideline. It was one of the first chances he'd had to play in that year. Came in and threw under all that pressure, threw a touchdown pass to Raymond Chester. I've got to feel that maybe that was the beginning of his comeback and his great story, his Cinderella story during this season. It's been a Cinderella story for the Raiders, certainly in the what was regarded start of the year, the toughest division of the NFL, the AFC West. No one really thought it'd be the Oakland Raiders here. Now it's third and five. San Diego must stop the Raiders, or Oakland will run out the clock. 152 left. Plunkett's going to run it for a first down. He got the first down and fell at the 24. And now the Chargers can call time for only the last time. And I think that might write the end of the Chargers story. A wonderful story it has been during this past season. But the colors in the Super Bowl are going to be silver and black. They have not 
call time, 123-122 left. The season that began shortly after the 4th of July, the hard work of summer, the four preseason games, uh, the highs and lows of a 16-game season, and the wild card Oakland Raiders, although they did indeed tie 11-5 with a record with San Diego. And now it's just two up the clock, 102-101, and there now is the final timeout exercised by the San Diego Chargers with 101 left in the game. And now, unless the Raiders make a horrendous error, Oakland can make its plans for New Orleans. 101 left. Second down play from the 21 of San Diego. The Raiders already starting to congratulate each other along the far sidelines. Plunkett needs only to take the snap and fall on it. That's what he'll do. And the clock will start to run. And as it does in this final minute, our thanks to an exceptional NBC crew. I, I just can't recall, Merlin, a, a better job done. Every great play was seen from an angle, two angles, three replays. The executive producer of NBC's NFL football is Don Olmeyer. Coordinating producer, Ted Nathanson. Telecast of this 1981 AFC Championship has been produced by Larry Sorello. Directed by Ted Nathanson. Replay producer, George Finkel. Our replay director was Ken Fouts. NFL 80 was produced by David Stern. Directed by Bob Levy. Wait for the visuals to catch up here. Our technical directors are Ray Fagelski and Sal Nagita. Associate producers, Mike Hadley, Peter Rolfe, and David Neal. Associate directors, Richard Klein, Mary Buda, John Filippelli. Thanks to our spotters, Bill Edwards, Dan Sexton. Also, Bob Sexton and Dennis Munition, Joe Costanzas, our statistician. Down to the final seconds. Five, four, the Oakland Raiders and the Philadelphia Eagles go to Super Bowl 15. can certainly appreciate whatever words Dan Fouts offered him. If anyone knows what it's like to be down, up, and then down at the bottom of the pile and then recover, it's Jim Plunkett of Oakland. Interesting how the two seasons uh, of the Chargers and Plunkett have coincided. As we said, that first appearance for that one pass, his first start of the season against the San Diego Chargers, and now he beats the Chargers to take his Oakland Raiders. Great job by their defense today and working on Dan Fouts, their offensive line gave Pluck at the time open holes for their receivers a tremendous performance by them and as uh, Glenn Dawson and John Brody indicated as they analyzed the game that the Raiders would have to establish the running game and Van Egan with 85 yards two three three long time-consuming drives by Oakland two to field goals and one to run out the clock and Van Egan was the star in the fourth quarter what a strange finish to a season that started out uh, rather awkwardly for the Oakland Raiders many said just a, a rebuilding year and the Oakland took exception to that they, but they have 14 new faces on the team this year incredible that Al Davis Tom Flores and all of these Oakland Raider players have brought it to such an outstanding fruition the way in, winningest team in football the last 20 years and the Oakland Raiders the few fans able to muster tickets in San Diego have every cause to celebrate we'll be right back after this word We're going 